For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bruce Giovanetti and I'm a councillor for Greater Shepparton City Council. And I've had the privilege of being on the uh, Sports Hall of Fame Committee uh, for the past three years. Um, it's interesting when you miss a meeting and you know, they've given you a running sheet and you miss a meeting and they change the running sheet on you. So I've had to make a few notes here tonight, so hopefully I don't uh, forget anything that uh, I should mention. First of all, just a couple of uh, issue, or a couple of matters. We're running a silent auction out in the other room. So if people wish to uh, purchase any of the items that are there, please register your name and the amount you wish to pay for them. And um, prior to the end of the evening, those uh, auction items will be uh, awarded. I'd also like to uh, mention that the Maroopna Primary School is representing the uh, Sporting Chance Kids who we had at our last function and they'll be bringing out the uh, certificates for all of the recipients this evening. But before we go any further, I'm very pleased uh, to invite Mr Greg James, a proud Yorta Yorta man who will give a welcome to country. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, Indigenous protocols for me, Stuart, I'd like to firstly um, acknowledge my elders, both past and present. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the Honourable Wendy Lovell, um, Mayor Kim O'Keefe, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Shelley Sutton and all other councillors here this evening. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the organising committee and people from other cultures and non-Indigenous people here this evening as well. Um, my name is Greg James and on behalf of the 16 family groups and the Elders Council of the Yorta Yorta Nations, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our magnificent country, particularly warm as in this time of year of course. Um, this is a beautiful country and we share and take pride in sharing it with you and trust that you also um, look after the country as we have had for quite some time. Um, this area, of course, has produced some wonderful sports people uh, over many years, and I see lots of those sports people here tonight. Um, my uncle, Glenn James, had the privilege of being honoured in the uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, I think, two years ago. Um, so people may remember Glenn, he was, was and still was the first Indigenous umpire to umpire in two grand finals, and I think he still is the only umpire, Indigenous umpire. Um, so we're quite proud of his achievements, and, um, and of course there's many other Aboriginal sports people throughout our uh, Golden Valley that has represented this, uh, this community, uh, the state and interstate at various um, football and cricket carnivals too as well. Um, I would like to congratulate uh, firstly, all of the inductees um, tonight, both senior and junior, and thank them for their commitment um, and their dedication to their individual sports. Because as we know, um, parents out there and uh, families and wives and partners, etc., you know that the contribution that they do make, and uh, sometimes uh, you don't get recognition for that, so this is a great opportunity to receive that recognition. Um, also, a big thank you to the organising committee um, for providing the platform, I guess, for the, you know, for these outstanding sports people to be, to be rightfully recognised and acknowledged. Um, I think that's very important, and and this is a platform for that. Um, there is plenty of platforms for it, but this is the ultimate in regards to um, recognition from an inductee into the Hall of Fame. So, I um, once again I congratulate them acknowledge them and appreciate their contribution to sport. So um, thank you and, and once again, welcome to our beautiful country and I trust that you have a fantastic evening. Thank you. Thank you, Greg, for that welcome to country and uh, we're very appreciative of you giving up your time to be here this evening. Um, my next job is uh, to introduce our Master of Ceremonies this evening, uh, and that our MC tonight is uh, Mr Don Kilgour, 
who has a rich sporting history in Greater Shepherd, and there's probably 95% of people here already know Don, but for the 5% who don't, I'll give you a little bit of a synopsis of uh, Don's career. Don spent 18 years as a sports presenter at the television station GMV6, which would later be known as Win TV. He was sports editor of Radio 3SR for six years and was an, also an original board member of Radio Sun FM. Don also had a particular interest in politics and spent 11 years as a member for Shepparton in the Victorian Parliament. And I must say that in a, a previous life, I had a bit to do with Don um, with working with community organisations. And I must say that uh, there are very few people who worked harder than Don to support the community here in Shepparton. He's been honoured with an Order of Australia Medal and life membership of the Golden Valley Football League. Amongst all these things in his busy life, this mad sportsman has also found a way to be an enthusiastic member of the Sports Hall of Fame Advisory Committee. His dedication to the committee and passion for sport in Greater Shepparton is greatly admired by many. Tonight, Don will lead us in celebrating and recognising 23 inductees into the Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. So please, would you join me in welcoming our MC for the evening, Don Kilgour. Thank you, Councillor Bruce, and good evening, everyone. It's great to have everybody here on such a special night for Shepparton. I want to firstly welcome the dignitaries who are with us this evening, the Mayor of the City of Greater Shepparton, Councillor Kim O'Keefe. We'll have Kim speak to us in a few moments. Our parliamentary representative here tonight is uh, Wendy Lovell, MLC. We have the Deputy Mayor, Shelley Sutton, and Councillors Bruce Giovanetti, Dennis Patterson. We have Councillor Seema Abdullah and Councillor Dinny Adam. I also want to, oh, we have some apologies from Councillor Chris Hazelman, Councillor Lees Osvari and Councillor Fern Summer. Uh, we also have an apology from Damien Drum, who's overseas, and Member for Shepparton, Susanna Sheed. Also the Honourable Martin Pakula, Minister for Sport, Tourism and Major Events, and uh, the Honourable Jacqueline Symes, uh, who is the Minister for Regional Development. Also Lisa Harker, uh, the CEO of Vic Smart uh, uh, Sport, uh, is, uh, is an apology tonight too. Folks, this is a, a very special night for sport in the city of Shepparton because we're going to recognise people who have made a significant contribution to sport, particularly at a local and state level. And uh, many of the national people at national level, like um, Bruce Quick is here tonight from the, the, uh, the Hall of Fame, and Margot Koskalainen, uh, John Thorson, and Kate Church have been honoured previously as people who have represented Australia, particularly at international level. But the Hall of Fame committee decided that there are so many people in the Shepparton area and within the city of Greater Shepparton who have done so much for sport that the city would like to recognise them as well. So tonight we induct 23 people uh, and uh, 20 uh, to, to join the 27 members as members of the Hall of Fame. And uh, you can see the photos if you leave, as you leave tonight, or if you go out during the evening, uh, back out into the foyer and just in front of the art gallery, you'll see on the left-hand side, on the wall facing Wellsford Street, the photos of all those, the 27 uh, people who are already in the Hall of Fame. And tonight, we add to those. The residents of Greater Shepparton have been well informed on the, the additions because our partners, the Shepparton News, through photos and stories in the news, have done a terrific job to promote the program. So tonight we induct 13 men and 10 women with 16 different sports, and I think that's terrific. The committee is always on the lookout for people who deserve recognition and would welcome nominations for the next induction, which will be to the Hall of Fame and the Roll of Honour in August 2021. So it's a couple of years away, so if you think that there's somebody that you might nominate, then please have a think about doing that. The information about the criteria for nomination, uh, and one of those is that you must reside within the city of Greater Shepparton, it's available from Council. So tonight we welcome the new inductees to the junior role of honour, and we thought that we, there are some people who before they get into senior sport or may not get into senior sport that have performed brilliantly as a junior and we wanted to recognise them as well. 
So I would ask those people who are in the junior role of honour uh, and uh, if they would make their way to the backstage uh, and we will be uh, having them out in just a few moments. Uh, we will present the inductees in three groups tonight and we'll have our first uh, presentation before dinner and then we will induct, uh, then we'll, uh, have dinner and then induct uh, the rest of the people tonight. But right now I would like to ask the Mayor of the City of Greater Shepparton, Councillor Kim O'Keefe, if she would come forward and welcome you and say hello on this very special occasion. Kim's doing a marvellous job as Mayor. Would you welcome Councillor O'Keefe? Thank you so much and good evening everyone. What a pleasure to be here tonight but also be in the company of John. I mean, what a fantastic ambassador for the community, for sport and a mentor to me. And I thank you very much, John, for everything you do for our community. Thank you, Greg, for that wonderful welcome to country. It's always you know, so, such a pleasure to have a representative from the Indigenous community to give such a warm welcome. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge my fellow councillors here tonight, Councillor Abdulla, Councillor Patterson and Councillor Giovanetti. And I'd also like to thank Councillor Patterson and Giovanetti for the hard work I know you've been doing on this committee. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Greater Shepherd and City Council, I would like to officially welcome you here this evening for this special occasion where we will welcome, recognise and celebrate 23 new inductees into the Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. Also a warm welcome those who have returned to Greater Shepparton for this induction ceremony. It is such a pleasure to have you and your family, representatives, gathered here for this special occasion. Greater Shepparton has produced many sporting stars who have represented the region across many endeavours. Tonight, we have the opportunity to officially recognise those who have brought honour to our region due to their sporting success. Tonight, Council will induct the honour roll and junior honour roll sports people into the next two tiers of the Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. The aim of the Hall of Fame is to preserve, celebrate and showcase the history and heritage of sporting excellence and achievements across Greater Shepparton. In 2020, we will see another international event in our region. Sorry, I'm just going to pick the wrong page. Sorry, come back to this. Our inaugural 27th Hall of Fame inductees were celebrated back in 2017. If you glance around the room tonight, you will see their banners hanging around the room. The stories of our inductees tonight are as inspiring as they are impressive. They are examples of how each of us can leave our mark on the national, state or local stage. It doesn't matter whether you're from Tatura, Murchison, Shepparton or Melbourne. If you are willing to put in the effort, you will give yourself a chance to succeed. Tonight, we will acknowledge the role of local sporting bodies that, when coupled with community support, have provided a foundation for developing our inductees to reach sporting excellence in their chosen field. Organised sport in Greater Shepparton has a high level of community ownership and pride. The idea of a Hall of Fame was suggested to Council by members of the community. Council has supported the idea and appointed a Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame advisory committee, consisting of seven local sporting enthusiasts, to work with Council to develop a framework, criteria and inaugural event for a Sports Hall of Fame. I would like to thank this advisory committee for the excellent work they have done and the many hours they have put in to bring our Hall of Fame to life and here again tonight. Council is committed to promoting access to sport, leisure and recreational facilities through ongoing development of high quality sporting infrastructure. We have hosted regional, state, national and international sporting events and we continue to throw our hat in the ring to host more. In 2020, we will see another international event in our region when we host the 2020 BMX World Cup. Our desire to host these major events paired with our world-class facilities, sees us well on our way to becoming the sporting capital of Victoria. In 2014, the Sporting Chance Grants Initiative was established to ensure all greater, greater residents, sorry, greater Shepparton residents, under the age of 18, could actively participate in sport and recreation, regardless of their means. Sporting Chance is a partnership program between council and family care, and one that we are very proud to support and to be involved in. Playing sport, being physically active, social and enjoying a healthy diet and some are some of the best ways to live a long and healthy and participative life. One of the biggest barriers to playing sport of some children and families is the cost. 
so Sporting Chance can assist by funding registration and membership fees of up to $80 for approved applicants. Since we first piloted in 2014, Sporting Chance has supported more than 2,500 Greater Shepparton children and teenagers in participating in sport and recreation, and we expect the demand for the program will continue to rise. It is wonderful to have a grants program that enables everyone to participate in sport and recreation. Tonight, we have a silent auction to raise funds for the Sporting Chance program. I encourage you to view the items on offer and give generously to such a wonderful cause. I extend a special thank you to the many organisations who have donated items towards this auction. We are also joined tonight by past Sporting Chance Grant recipients who will assist in the induction ceremony, and I am sure they will enjoy the experience tonight of meeting our wonderful sporting stars. Our inaugural inductees have resided in Greater Shepparton for at least 10 years. They participated in their sport in Shepparton for at least five years competed in an open age competition and have made a significant contribution to their sport at the Australian representative level. As part of their induction, the individual's achievement, integrity, sportsmanship and character were also considered. Once the appropriate space becomes available, we can't wait to officially open the Hall of Fame area. The new area will display all of our Hall of Fame photos and information that currently sit proudly at our Wellsford Street office. Growing up in Shepparton, I know many of the inductees tonight, and I have seen firsthand their successful journeys and incredible dedication. So once again, I congratulate all of you who will be inducted later tonight. Council is so pleased to be able to recognise what you have achieved and ensure that your success is noted permanently as a part of Greater Shepparton's sporting history. So congratulations, and I look forward to the evening. And I'll hand you back to Don. I bet you a seat. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I got a nice soft chair for you because you've got a lot of work to do tonight. Each one of these people will uh, receive a certificate from the Mayor. So let's move in now to the Junior Roll of Honour as we induct the first people ever into the Junior Roll of Honour. And the first person tonight to be inducted will be Maddie Garrick. The Shepparton Basketball Association saw a youngster named Maddie Garrick join the Junior Gators in 2002 and develop into a player who would eventually win a place with the Australian Opals. Maddie was a standout junior who loved the game and played representative basketball with the Junior Gators as she played twice a week and working her way through the junior ranks to the Bulleen Boomers. She played for Country Victoria at under 16 and under 18 level before joining the Bendigo uh, spirit in the WNBL as a 17-year-old. She earned gold at the Australian Youth Olympic Festival and earned valuable experience at the 2011 Under-19 World Championships. Maddie then made a move to the Institute of Sport and uh, she returned to the spirit in 2012, was part of back-to-back -back, uh, championships in 2012-13 and 13-14 seasons. In 2014, she averaged 19 points, seven rebounds and two assists to win the Most Valuable Player Award. In 2015, Maddie joined the Melbourne Boomers where she has improved her performance and won the Most Valuable Player Award in 2017 and she earned a spot with the Australian Opals at the FIBA Women's Asia Cup where they won the silver medal and Maddie has played over 200 WNBL games and has reached the highest level in basketball. That's fantastic for a Shepparton basketballer. Recently she played basketball in the Turkey Super League and is part of the Australian gold medal winning team in the 3x3 Asia Cup in China. The City of Shepparton congratulates Maddie Garrick and in inducts her into the Hall of Fame. Thank you, Maddie. our sporting chance people coming out and presenting the uh, certificate to the mayor who's presented it to Maddie and we're looking for a photographer behind me. Okay, we just need to get everybody's photo as they come forward and uh, receive that. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. Maddie, would you like to come over? Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Maddie, I'll just turn that. Thank you. Well, Maddie, congratulations, and being the very first inductee into the, the Hall of Fame, how do you feel about that? Oh, I'm, I 
absolutely honoured. I think just to start off with, to be inducted first and foremost, but to be the first female to do that uh, in the junior honour roll, I'm yeah, absolutely honoured. I'm sure there's some people you'd like to thank uh, about what you've done? Absolutely. Again, first and foremost, I couldn't be here being inducted to the Greater Shepherd and Hall of Fame without my parents, their ongoing support and commitment um, to my basketball, and a lot of years spent in the, in the back of the car, either going to Bendigo or to, Mel uh, yeah, to Melbourne. I did a lot of study. I actually used to play the flute, so that was, um, that was interesting, practicing in the back of the car. Um, but yeah, without their ongoing support, I would not be here 16 years later, um, still playing basketball. Well, Shepparton is very proud of you. You've done uh, the, the, the city proud, and we hope that there's more to come for you in the future, but thank you for being here tonight, and congratulations. Would you welcome the first inductee into the Junior Hall of Fame? Thank you very much, Maddie. Thank you. Just like to take the way off. Our second inductee is Glenn Harrop. Glenn grew up in Shepparton, attending Boucher Street Primary and the Shepparton North Technical Schools. And he was uh, introduced to the sport of volleyball in year seven and immediately showed great talent in the game. He represented both his school and the GV Volleyball Association on many occasions as a junior and as a senior whilst being eligible to play as a junior. The Victorian volleyball officials were very impressed with Glenn's ability whilst conducting a coaching clinic in Shepparton. And they soon got him uh, to uh, go to Melbourne and they selected him in volleyball for Volleyball Victoria. It required him to attend state training at Essendon High School. His commitment to training was exceptional. It required hours of travelling to and from Shepparton whilst endeavouring to fulfil his requirements at school here in Shepparton. The hard training paid off and in 1985, Glenn was selected in the Victorian Volleyball Under 15 team for the Australian Championships. Glenn was so valued as a member of the Victorian team, he continued to be a part of the state squad and continued to travel to Melbourne for state squad duties. He was selected in the Victorian under 17s in 1987. His performances during the national titles were such that the leadership saw him selected as captain of Victoria for the under 19 championships in 1988. Following his success as a junior, Glenn switched to Australian rules football, but suffered a leg injury which curtailed his sports involvement. As a junior sportsman in Shepparton, Glenn reached great heights to captain his state, his chosen sport of volleyball, and is now recognised as a Roll of Honour member in the Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. Would you welcome Glenn Harrop? Right, thank you, Glenn. Could you come over? And uh, it, it, it's a while now, isn't it? Because you know, they talked about you going to the North Tech. Yes. So that hasn't been there for a long while, has it? No, it hasn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done great things. And, uh, and volleyball was something fairly new to Shepparton, and, and you took it up, and you were very yeah, successful. Yeah, just, just one of those sports that sort of clicked at the time. And yeah, obviously, the rest is history. But yeah. Fantastic. Well, well to, 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 you know, you obviously put in a lot of travelling and a lot of effort to go to training and, uh, and it all paid off because you played for Victoria. Yeah, look, like Maddie said, um, mum and dad probably instrumental in, you know, those long trips in the car and as every sportsman probably recognises that, you know, your parents probably are the ones that push you along and give that, uh, you know, that inspired sort of action to keep going. So, you know, to them it was fantastic. So I thank them a lot. Well, I guess there's a lot of guys you went to school with here will remember you playing volleyball and footy. Yep. Uh, but you got injured at football, so that's the yeah, way things footy, go. Yeah, footy career's over, yeah. so now you sort of see it through the kids. So. You still playing any sport? I've actually just started playing volleyball in the last three weeks. Well, so. there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, apart from that, it's, it's been good. Well, you've been recognised, and congratulations on being a part of the Hall of Fame. Glenn Harrop, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Thanks very much, Glenn. The, the name of Koskalainen has been synonymous with softball in Shepparton, as Margot Koskalainen is a member of the Sports Hall of Fame as an Australian Olympian softball umpire. Margot's daughter Trudy played softball and netball. However, it was like Glenn in the sport of volleyball that she rose to national level as a junior. Trudy attended the Boucher Street Primary School and the Wanganui Park High. She played uh, softball and represented the Shepparton Softball Association in the state championships 
as a pitcher for both the under-14s and under-17s. In the winter, she chose to play netball and also represented Shepparton at junior level in the Victorian Championships. Trudy was then recruited to play volleyball by Terry Crozier and was coached by Peter Dunkley and Bob Crozier, who were teachers at Wanganui at the time. She played for her school and the Shepparton Volleyball Association at both junior and senior levels. Trudy was spotted by the Victorian Volleyball Association officials when she attended a coaching clinic in 1982 and was asked to try out and was selected in the Victorian country under 17 girls team at the age of 14. She was subsequently added to the training squad for the Victorian underage team and was selected in the under 18 girls at 15 for the national under 18 championships in Canberra. She also completed in the 1984 championships in Dubbo. Not only was Trudy a multi-talented sports person, but she was always beautifully presented and in 1985 was chosen as the Shepparton Sun Showgirl. You remember when they used to have the Sun Showgirl? And it, at one time, I don't know whether Trudy did, but at one time you used to win your weight in SPC Fruit if you were the Miss Sun Showgirl. So Trudy's been there to, to do that, but it, it epitomises the talents that girls have produced in Shepparton and the Shepparton City now recognises her efforts as a junior sports person by inducting her into the Sports Hall of Fame honour roll. Congratulations, Trudy Koskalainen. <laughs> so, Trudy. Um, you, of course, know a bit about the Sports Hall of Fame as, as Mum uh, is, is a member of the Sports Hall of Fame and uh, you have seen your mum do so much in, in the world of softball and then it was volleyball that eventually got you to the top. It was, thanks to Terry Curtis coming around because she was short on her volleyball team and then from then on I played every day, every night. Homework took a second <laughs> back step, you know. Volleyball was my main thing and then, as you said, in summer, played softball, always played softball. I was born playing softball. Yeah. Well, mum was there all the time. Always, so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Your mum used to come into 3SR and do the softball program on the air. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. I do remember <laughs> that, yeah. So, uh, so uh, Trudy, of course, uh, you've uh, moved on in life and married and uh, you're still playing any sport? No, no sport now. No sport now? I look after mum's garden for her. Look after yeah. mum's garden. That's yep. really good. So, uh, Trudy, congratulations. Thank and uh, The City of Shepparton recognise you and welcome to the Hall Thank of Fame. Thank you Thank you very much. much. Trudy Costellano. <laughs> During the, the very first Sports Hall of Fame a couple of years ago, uh, recognising people who had performed brilliantly in sport, uh, we had four cyclists who had represented uh, Australia in the Olympic Games. And one of the cyclists inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame is John Thorson, who represented Australia in the Olympic Games. But we're now going to induct John's son, Daniel, as a junior honour roll member due to his success as a junior cyclist. Daniel was always destined to ride a bike. I see him at, on the roads and see him at the velodrome with his father as coach and he spent thousands of hours training both on the road and at the velodrome. He commenced as a 10-year-old and developed his talent as on the regular Wednesday night uh, track cycling meetings at, uh, and I used to see him there and it was just great to see him ride. It was obviously, he obviously had a, a special talent uh, as of course his, his father did being an Olympian. By the time he was 14, he won his first selection in the Victorian team for the 2000 State Championships. By 2002, he was an under-17 national champion uh, winner. He arrived as a top prospect and worked hard to improve his standard. He came under notice of the big names and he signed a contract with pro-continental cycling team Drapak Porsche, and that was a big help to his cycling career. The same year, he won selection in the Australian team for the Junior World Championships in Moscow. He came second in the Kerren and third in the scratch race. He also won the Australian title in the scratch race and the team sprint. Daniel followed up with another Australian selection in 2004 for the Los Angeles world title. He was second in the Kerren. The guy that won the Kerren then failed a drug test. And how sad is it? You know, when we look at sport and we look at drugs and we see what it's done, here's Daniel Thorson from Shepparton doing his utmost to win and there was a drug cheat that beat him, but of course uh, Daniel got second prize and then after it was all over, 
they find that this guy was on drugs. And it's just very sad that it happens in our sport and it affected our own Daniel Thorson. Daniel also represented Australia in the Youth Commonwealth Games. He finished first in three events, the Kieran, the Sprint and the Time Trial. It was a great year for him to become champion of champions for the Australian track cycling. Most of his big races were overseas. However, Shepparton cycling fans were treated to a wonderful performance and I'll never forget it. I was there to see him ride in the Shepparton wheel race and he won the Blue Ribbon event, the Shepparton wheel race at the Christmas Carnival. He also won the Kieran and the Scratch race on the same day. What a, what a powerful uh, rider and how thrilling it was. He thrilled the locals. He was awarded the honour of being Shepparton Sport, Sports Person of the Year. He was an outstanding junior cyclist, wasn't able to put it as the work in when he became a senior. He actually joined the police force and for some time was stationed in Shepparton. He's now actually living overseas, so he's not here tonight to be inducted uh, uh, himself as a world-class junior cyclist, but we do have his father, world, uh, the, the, the great John Thorson, the Olympian and our Sports Hall of Fame member. John, would you come forward and welcome, uh, be welcomed here tonight representing Daniel. Oh, and his mum's here too. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't see you, and that was that was great to uh, to have you here because uh, Daniel's a very special person to both of you, and I know you were so proud of what he did. All right, if you'd both like to come forward, and uh, John, now you're, you're a man of a few words, John, but I know you want to say how proud you were of your son. Just come up to the mic, mate. And uh, you, you, you must be very, very proud to be father of a guy who performed so well. Oh, I am, actually. Um, he'd like to thank Vin Truscott, because he was the first one to sponsor him, uh, Slugger Baldy, uh, and the Cycling Club. So I'll give it to his mother because I'm just so excited. Well, come on, mummy, come and say a few words because, because I know how proud you were of Daniel and how much you supported him. Yes, um, we were very proud of Daniel. And uh, I was speaking to him just yesterday and he said he's absolutely thrilled to be inducted into the um, Hall of Fame. And um, one thing we were talking about and what made him um, really proud to be sh from Shepparton was... The, the local cycling fans who really sort of got behind him and uh, supported him and, and followed his journey and he really wanted to thank all, all, all of Shepparton for getting behind him. Thank you. Well, please give him our regards and tell him we missed him, but thank you very much for coming forward. Would you welcome the Thorsons? So, folks, that's the four people who tonight uh, have been inducted into to the junior honour roll and I would imagine that by the time we hold our next uh, in a couple of years time we will have a, a number of other junior people who will be recognised for what they did as a junior even though they might be senior people now uh, in senior sport it was for what they did as a junior so thank you to those people in the junior honour roll. We now move into the senior honour roll and I want to welcome uh, a lady who has been known as Shepparton's best all-round sportswoman. And if you've known Peg Curtis as I have over the years, uh, you know that uh, she's been in every sort of sport. She was honoured by the City of Greater Shepparton as the first all-round sportswoman the city has produced. Her individual talent and achievements in so many sports is remarkable in itself. However, if Peg's, it's Peg's influence on so many young Shepparton's girls' sporting lives as coach at both netball and softball that is immeasurable. Peg's attitude towards sport is well known. She was fiercely competitive. She was feisty and she was dynamic. And as all the girls said, you don't cross Peg. Her impact on the success of Shepparton netball and softball and that of individual Shepparton players at both state and national level can't be overstated. Peg was involved as a player or coach in badminton, bowls, golf, hockey, netball, softball, squash and table tennis. Her exploits included 
playing regional tennis uh, as a player or coach in badminton, bowls, golf and hockey, etc. She played regional tennis for and, and represented Shepparton at Country Week at Kuyong. She was the Shepparton squash champion. She was the Shepparton table tennis champion. She twice scored a hole in one in golf. She coached multiple netball teams, including eight at the Victorian Country Championships. Victorian Country netball team, she was coach on five occasions. She coached multiple under-17 softball and representative teams. She was involved in the support and development of the sport in Shepparton. She coached primary school teams. She helped to establish the Shepparton Softball Association and she was treasurer for many years. She formed the VPI Softball Club, formed the Shepparton South Netball Club. 20 teams she had in Shepparton Netball. She formed the Shepparton South Softball Club with under 14s and under 17s and open teams. The name of Curtis has been synonymous with successful female sport in Shepparton. The City of Shepparton have named a park in North Shepparton, the Curtis Park, to recognise her service to Shepparton sport. And Shepparton now honours her with induction into the honour roll of the Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, Peg is not well and is unable to be with us tonight, but her daughter, Robin Curtis, is coming forward to accept a trophy that I'm sure uh, she's very, going to be very pleased to hand over to Peg. Would you welcome Robin Curtis? Robin, come over and it's really sad that Mum's not able to be here, but she's not well. No, there's not a lot of good health news at 91, I'm afraid, but look, she did, she was well when she heard about the nomination and uh, she was absolutely thrilled to be recognised and she was, she had every intention of coming up until she just got sick very recently, so um, look, she, she can't believe the the accolade she's got over the years for doing something she just loved. She loved all the girls. She a great believer in women's sport and uh, she just wanted always to get the best that she could from them. So she, w she always took it seriously. Mm -hmm. She wanted everyone to show up at training. You, you play as you train and uh, a great believer in constructive criticism, which wasn't always everyone's cup of tea, so. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you, you were highly involved with mum yes. in many of the sports. Yes, so I didn't have a name, I had a position. Right. So, <laughs> so you're, a, you're a WD or you're a centre yes. or you're a goal attack or a goal keeper or you're a catcher or you're first base, yes. But it, it, it's not often you see somebody that's so good as a coach but also such a great player in yes. all those sports. Yeah. Her great skill, the girls used to tell me as a coach, was she could watch a game, be it a football, or netball, and she could always see what was happening and she could change it. You so, only had to oh. sit in the Deakin Reserve Grandstand on a Saturday oh, yes. when she and Sid sat down on the front <laughs> on the right-hand side and she let everybody know that Shepparton should win. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and if you couldn't play, then you should come and sit on the bench. Uh, that's true, that's true. <laughs> Look, um, there's only one Peg Curtis. Yes. There only would be one Peg yeah. Curtis for somebody who was so good at all sports yes. but put so much into the sport. She did. Please tell Mum how proud we are of her and I know you'll I present that with to her and thank I'll you for coming and representing Mum. Thank you. Robin Curtis, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, cricket is, is in the air and uh, the second test at uh, London is going on at Lords. Shepparton, of course, has been involved in cricket for so many years. Now, the Central Park St Brendan's Cricket Club had two young players in Brian Doyle and Rowan Larkin who were elevated into first-class cricket together. Brian Doyle commenced his cricket with the reformed uh, Dookie Cricket Club out there at Dookie and he played in a premiership team in D grade. It's a long way from D grade Dookie to the Victorian cricket team, but he, he made it. Uh, he uh, enjoyed his time in the country and then he moved into Central Parks and Brendan's where he developed into a top class spin bowler. He was soon selected to represent Cricket Shepparton in the McPherson Shield in the regional games and he showed selectors that he was ready to play country week cricket. 
It was at Melbourne Country Week that he came under notice of the Carlton Cricket Club, which recruited him and uh, elevated him into the senior team. It wasn't long before he was invited to the state training squad and his spinning fingers made him the first shearer to be selected to play for Victoria. Isn't that a terrific scene? To be the first shearer to play cricket for Victoria. And I know he's very proud of that because he still shears a few sheep. But, uh, he also won a scholarship to the Victorian Institute of Sport where he honed his cricket skills. He relished the opportunity to play first class cricket. He enjoyed playing uh, with and winning against the best cricketers in the country. During his 10 years with Carlton, he played eight Sheffield Shield games with Victoria. He represented the state in the Mercantile Cup one day uh, cup games. He returned to Shepparton as captain coach of his former club, Central Parks and Brendans, and had a fantastic success playing five A-grade premierships and winning three one-day premierships. Brian continued to represent Shepparton at Country Week and at regional level. He was selected to represent Victorian country at the top-class carnival. Cricket Shepparton thought so much of Brian's contribution that it actually named the player of the series for the T20 competition the Brian Doyle Medal, which is certainly great for Doyley. The City of Greater Shepparton now rec recognises Brian as one of our most successful cricketers and is, is now inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame Honour Roll. Would you welcome our new Honour Roll cricket member, Brian Doyle. Brian, come over and uh, I was talking to Brian on the phone while he was driving his ute and we were talking away about cricket and then I hear in the background, ah! and he's got a lamb on the front seat of his ute because it's, his mother had shed it away and he'd taken it home. Did, did the lamb survive? Yeah, we've still got it. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I've done something right. But Brian, um, as you know, there hasn't been a Shepparton cricketer make the Australian team but you're one of a couple who have made the Victorian team, and that must make you proud. Oh, I feel extremely privileged um, and lucky. Uh, as Don said, I came from Dookie, and um, back then we didn't even have a side, so to get where I did, I feel pretty lucky. It was that spinning finger that got you where you needed to be, isn't it? Well, I didn't always bowl spin. Uh, well, I started off trying to bowl as fast as I could and realised pretty quickly I couldn't. Uh, so. I had a rolled up a training one night and bowled a couple of spinners and one obviously turned, so I thought maybe that might be my art. And you were just lucky enough to be playing a Country Week game at Carlton and the Carlton cricketers saw you and your mate Larko mm. and invited you to try and that was just a great yeah. luck. Yeah, it was, yeah. it yeah. was. Um, the rest is history, of course, but mm. um, I feel quite privileged also to um, be here tonight and be inducted with Rowan. Uh, our careers have been paralleled and We've forged, you know, some great memories together. So to be inducted with him tonight, I feel quite privileged. And of course, the, the committee not only recognises that you were one of a few players to play for our state, but you came back to Shepparton and you contributed, contributed so much to Central Parks and Brendan's with all those premierships. So, you know, that must have been very satisfying. Oh, the, I think the, my love was always Central Parks and Brendan's. Um, and once again, I'd like to thank them for uh, their support and allowing me to forge a career again. Um, but so so many great memories there and some great people. Every club has great people within it, but Central Parks and Brendan seem to have a lot um, and I'm indebted to them for uh, where I am tonight. Uh, but it was it is a great club, so I loved it there. Well, put that up on the wall and be proud to show people. Brian, well done. Brian Doyle from the, the Hall of Fame Roll of Thanks, Thanks, Brian. Man. Thank you. We've talked tonight about people playing and getting involved in sport, um, but the City of Greater Shepparton not only honours people who have been involved in sport as players, but also as administrators. One such administrator is Ian Fitzsimmons, who commenced his sports involvement at nine years of age when he acted as scorer for the Shepparton Youth Club Cricket Club. Ian would go on to spend over 60 years as a scorer, trainer, player, statistician, committee man, office holder, tribunal member, an administrator in the sports of cricket, football, 
lawn bowls and ten pin bowls. He loved cricket scoring. And when the ABC came to Shepparton, because the English cricket team played here in 1962 under the captaincy of Colin Cowdery, and there was Fitzy up in the scoreboard with the ABC's Dick Mason being their official scorer. And he just loved the game because of that. It broadcast from Deakin Reserve and when the English played the country 11. So Fitzy was a scorer for the ABC and then went on to score at youth club and, uh, and other places as well. He's been awarded life membership of five sports associations and four organisations. He was also named the Shepparton Citizen of the Year in 2010. He took on every role available at the Shepparton Youth Club Cricket Club. Over 25 years, acted as player, scorer, president and selector and uh, was uh, well known for taking on many tasks for the Shepparton Cricket Association where he managed and scored for Shepparton Country Week and the Goulburn Murray Cricket Association and scored for international games across the Goulburn Valley. Leon's other love was football and he was involved with the Shepparton Footy Club for over a 33 year period, he became a trainer with Shepparton and served for 588 consecutive games as a trainer, as well as being trainer for the Goulburn Valley Football League. So he certainly has done the job. He took on the secretary's role with the Shepparton Footy Club, was involved on the committee that saved the club from financial ruin, and after retiring as a trainer, he took on the role of statistician. He was the first selected statistician when the electronic media needed support for broadcasts and telecasts and Ian was recruited into the circle of the Goulburn Valley Football League where he became a member of the board and was chairman from 2002 to 2007. He also produced the annual fixture for 30 years and wrote match previews in the footy record. He has also supported five sports bodies as a tribunal member and in later life he took to playing bowls from the Shepparton Golf Bowls Club for around 25 years and uh, was including six years as club president. So it's been a life loved being involved in sport for Ian Fitzsimmons and he's given so much support to the organisation he's been involved with. The Sports Hall of Fame salutes Ian's wonderful work and welcomes him as a member of the Roll of Honour. Welcome Ian Fitzsimmons. Come over, Fit Fitzy's been in hospital recently, so he hasn't been too well, but come over, Fitzy, and I uh, just want to say that it's great that the city that you've done so much work for and around has recognised you, and uh, you've just loved sport, haven't you? Look, I, uh, I don't know what I would have done otherwise. Uh, like, from nine years old, I just couldn't get it out of my mind, so I just kept going. And uh, not too many people put their hand up nowadays, so I was one of the blokes that did. So, when you look back at all the things you've done, what's been the one that you've enjoyed the most, do you think? Oh, cricket. Uh, I was very lucky to be in a year with Ken Tyquin, Des Campbell, Col Edwards, yeah. and blokes like yourself. You did play Mr. a bit of cricket, but uh, you, one you, game. You, you, stuck, you, you stuck You stuck to, to, to scoring. Yeah, one game and I made a duck, so I reckon <laughs> I did all right. Probably should be a few more blokes to take a lesson out of that, Fitzy. Yeah. <laughs> But you're, you're still involved in sport and you, know, you went on and took on the bowls and whatever, so uh, it's great that Shepparton has been able to recognise uh, what you have done and what you've achieved and the way that you've helped Ian Fitzsimmons, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Fitz. Thanks very much. It seems it's time for me to uh, move aside from the microphone and I introduce uh, our F Hall of Fame committee member and our Hall of Fame member, Margot Koskalainen, OAM. Thank you, Margot. It is indeed a privilege for me to present to you Don Kilgour as a Roll of Honour inductee. Don's sporting achievements are significant, but with a different focus and of great value to the sporting landscape of Greater Shepparton. In 1968, radio station 3SR appointed former Katamatite resident Don Kilgour as sports editor. Don joined his twin brother Rod, who was a breakfast announcer. Both announcers were very keen sports followers. 
and Don set out to ensure 3SR supported and promoted sport as much as possible. Don was soon hosting five sports programs per week. Thursday nights, team selections. Friday night, sports preview. Saturday, broadcasting football. Saturday night, a result service, as well as Sunday morning plus a sports report three mornings per week on the breakfast session. Sports preview programs gave local sports the opportunity to have representatives interviewed on the radio to promote their sport, including tournaments, carnivals and other events. Twelve different sports received coverage on 3SR Sport. Don also broadcast school athletics events, cycle races and major sports events. On leaving 3SR in 1973, Don and Rod became sports commentators on GMV6 television. For the next 18 years, they presented sports news two or three nights per week on TV. With a great love of Australian football, Don took on the role of Public Relations Officer for the GVFL for 14 years, publishing the football program, and he became the voice of football finals and functions. Don and Rod were also commentators for the television coverage of the GVFL Grand Finals. Don became president of the Goulburn Valley Schoolboys Football Association, the body which took schoolboys a schoolboys team to Melbourne each year for the schoolboys state carnival. Don was proud of the state grand finals the boys won and he received life membership of the schoolboys. Don spent 11 years as a member of Shepparton in the Victorian Parliament and on his retirement got back into being involved in sport. That's if he ever left it. He spent 20 years as a member of the Deakin Reserve Management Committee 14 years as secretary, and he's proud, very proud, of the improvements to the reserver over that time. His interest in cycling saw him as track commentator at the Shepherd and Velodrome on Wednesday evenings. He was also called upon to compare many sports meetings and events throughout the Goulburn Valley. He was ride director for the Fruit Loop bike ride to raise money for hospice care. In 2006, with his wife Cheryl, volunteered at the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne. He has been a tribunal member for the GVFL, the Pecola League and the Shepparton Junior Football League. With his brother Rod, Don wrote the history of the Shepparton East Football Club. Don's contribution to the sporting environment in pr promoting all sport within Greater Shepparton is exceptional sustained and extremely effective. He is sought by many in the sporting arena for his knowledge of and enthusiasm for all things sport. And because of this passion, became an inaugural member of the Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame Committee. Don is one of Shepparton's most well-informed and recognisable sports individual and is now inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame Roll of Honour. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Thank you, Margot, for that. Uh, this is very embarrassing. Um, being a part of the committee, I had to be told at a meeting that I was on a list that I didn't know I was on. Um, I just want to say thank you to the, uh, to the City of Greater Shepparton for the recognition. I've just loved every minute that I've had in sport, from a little kid at Katamatite who was told by my hero, Country Week tennis player Pat O'Kane, that I should become a sports commentator, and to be able to do that in life, uh, to be able to interview people in, in, from television and radio uh, that have been sports 
masters from around the world and particularly to involve with the local sporting organisation. It's been fantastic. I want to thank my wife Cheryl for uh, the great support she's shown and my three kids over the years because I was off at sport and Cheryl was home li listening to her beloved Hawks play football on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, but without Cheryl, I couldn't have done what I've done. I've, I've really loved it and thank you for the involvement for the, uh, in the Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Now I'll put my commentating hat on again, my MC hat on. That's the conclusion of the first group of people. We will now have the meal, the uh, main meal. And look, there are fantastic things over there in the, in the silent auction. Uh, there are some things that I'm sure people won't want to go home without and you can put a price in and see if you can get it at the right price. Please, during the breaks tonight, go and have a look at the silent auction and I'm sure you might be interested in putting some bids forward. Thank you very much. We'll have the meal and be back shortly. There we go. ...of people who are to be inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame. Dancing with the Stars has been a hugely popular TV show in Australia and people from Shepparton were delighted when local Shepparton dancer Amanda Garner was thrust into the stardom when she partnered Grant Denyer to win the title in, in 2006. Amanda followed up in 2007 as the winner again, this time with Jamie Dury on her arm. He was a highlight of Amanda's dancing career which began as a seven-year-old when she commenced at the Excel Dance Studio alongside the other five members of her family. She advanced as a top dancer and experienced a previous highlight of her career when she partnered her brother Jeremy to make the final of the Australian Dance Sport Championships. She also appeared on the UK TV show Strictly Come Dancing. Being crowned the winner of Series 4 of Dancing of the Stars was a life-changing experience and set Amanda on her way to dancing internationally and including as a feature dancer in the Royal Caribbean cruise ships. She appeared in the renowned Burn the Floor touring show in China and the USA, and Amanda was judged second in the Las Vegas championships in the USA. She also won the Victorian championships in 2012. Shepherd and dance students have had the opportunity to learn the art of ballroom dancing from our international star as she's taught at the XL Dance Studio throughout the years. She's also trained many debutantes who have probably appeared here on this stage uh, over the years. And uh, the, she uh, is very much involved in dancing and is a resident of the city and teaches at the XL Studio as well as enjoying married life with her one-year-old child. The Garner family has represented Shepparton wonderfully on the world dancing stage and the city of Greater Shepparton would like, now like to recognise Amanda Garner as a Roll of Honour member uh, and welcome her into the Sports Hall of Fame. Would you please welcome Amanda Garner. Amanda, come over and uh, now that you're a resident of Shepparton again after yes. going away, you've had a, a wonderful career overseas and now you're back to be a, a family mum and enjoy life again in Shepparton. But gee, you've reached some wonderful heights. It must have been great. Yeah, it was amazing. We, I mean, my brother, my first dance partner and then my second dance partner, my husband, um, we've travelled so much and it's just been an amazing sport to be a part of and obviously being from such a small town in Shepparton, to travel as far as places like Alaska is just unbelievable. And you, you've, uh, you've been in, involved with the whole family dancing over the years, so it must have been interesting when you were all there, uh, brothers and all at the dance school. Yeah, well, I have four brothers and I was the only girl at one point, so I had to dance with all of them. So I think I got a lot of practice. <laughs> what, what about the, the TV shows themselves? Are they very stressful? Well, of course. I mean, you, you, in about a week, you have to teach someone who's never danced before to perform and and learn new steps, you know, in front of millions. It's amazing. And the, so the pressure was really on. Oh yeah, a lot of pressure. Well, and I was very young too. 
Oh, so, so don't don't tell everybody out there, but tell these people here. Who was the best star you danced with? Out of the oh, well, Grant, of Grant. course. Grant. Oh, Grant. Yeah. Grant. He was just more easy to, to deal with, so right. that was good. But he was a lot of fun. That's good. And dancing's about fun, so it made my job much easier. Well, that's good. I was just going to ask you, you've enjoyed the dancing and it's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. Hard work, but fun. Well, tonight, the City of Greater Shepparton wants to recognise what you have done and say that you've done a fantastic job. You've brought great fame to Shepparton and uh, it's been wonderful. It was wonderful to see you in those shows and uh, congratulations on what you've done uh, and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Amanda, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, Ma Madam Mayor, if you would just come over for a second, please, because a little bird told me that your daughter uh, has had a great success overseas. Could you like to tell the people what she's done? Yeah, well, look, Em's the world aerobic champion, which I'm very proud of. So sport's a very big part of our family. And as we speak, she's in Queensland with her peak physique of sh sh local Shepherd and Aerobic Club. And they've won gold. Someone told me here tonight they actually won gold. I was still waiting to check my messages um, with their, their, their cheer team. So Em does, yeah, sport aerobics. Look, she's a, a national estate, a world champion. But the thing about I love about it is it's such a great, clean sport. It's about having fun mm -hmm. and the competitiveness and what they achieve is just a bonus if they win medals. It's just such a good sport. But yeah, so she's off to the world titles. Did she pick up her liveness from her mother? Of course, and, <laughs> and all her sporting accolades. Of course, her father's here. But um, yeah, of course, it's me where she gets all her talent from. But, <laughs> right. okay. but no, we're very proud of her. So Thank off you, to the Kim. world titles. So let's, let's hope yeah, she does you know, Shepherd and Proud. She does Shepherd and Proud anyway. Thank you. But well, well done for the Mayor of Shepparton to have her daughter here. Well, we've just heard from Amanda Garner, and now we move to Jeremy, because many young people in Shepparton have attended the XL local dance studio to learn to dance and help their social life along. Now, one youngster in Jeremy joined his brothers and sister at the studio, but could never have imagined that this would lead to a successful national and international career as a dancer. Jeremy developed into one of Australia's best ballroom dancers who has been uh, an Australian dance sport finalist six times. He was assistant choreographer to his sister Amanda, and uh, the winner of the Dancing with the Stars. On the world stage, he's been an Australian representative to the World Dance Sport Championships on three occasions. Jeremy's brilliance has seen him join top international dance presentations. He performed in Strictly Come Dancing in the UK, as his sister did, and had multiple world tours with the renowned Burn the Floor dance team, which was the only ballroom show to perform on Broadway and in 2009 in London's West End in 2010. In Australia, we've seen him perform in Dancing with the Stars, on learning of his wife, who is, who is his dance partner's hip condition, which would affect her dancing, he returned home and bought Pivot Dance Studios in Melbourne, whilst also teaching dancing in Shepparton. Since then, he's trained multiple Australian champions in various divisions, including the Blackpool Masters Champion, the most prestigious competition in the world. Jeremy is a professional dancer on Australia's Dancing with the Stars. Jeremy has also become an adjudicator for dance competitions. Some of Shepparton's debutants have been lucky enough to have been trained by our very own world-renowned dancer. When one thinks about Dancing with the Stars, the city of Greater Shepparton now pays tribute to a star, a young man who lived his dream of being a world-class dancer and has represented our city with class and with brilliance around the world. Jeremy Garner is now inducted into the honour roll of the Sports Hall of Fame. Welcome, Jeremy. Well, Jeremy, I guess when you started here dancing with the other members of the family, you really had no idea what it was going to turn into. No, I certainly didn't. I didn't want to be a dancer at all. And thanks, Mum and Dad, <laughs> sure, for that. I'm sure, sure Mum's happy about yeah. that. <laughs> and, and so, did, did you, where, where do you think it, it, it all came from? Every member of the family was keen on dancing. Why was it that you finished up as that great worldwide star? Determination is one of it. Crazy parents that, that do support you and take you everywhere you need to go. One of the biggest things I think is uh, the town of Shepparton 
I'll never forget uh, Amanda and I trying to raise money. I think we had to come up with 20,000 every year. And I would go door knocking, we would go to every business, sausage sizzles, chocolate sales. And I'd, it was rare that we'd be turned down uh, for this thing called dancing that not many people knew much about. So it, it's a big part to Shepparton. I think not being part of a small town, we probably wouldn't have made it. Mm. I guess when a lot of people think about sport, dancing's not a part of sport that they think of until they watch it on, say, Dancing of the Stars and realise just how athletic it is. Absolutely. You have to do it as a, as a couple, to music. Uh, I have to wear makeup sometimes. Probably the only sport that does that. But uh, it has its challenges. And, uh, you know, arguments, which Amanda knows all about, night after night. So do you enjoy teaching? I love it. Absolutely love it. Seeing when people get to um, take it to the next level and when they actually achieve something, mm -hmm. little small steps along the way. Right. It's great. Well, Jeremy, it's tremendous to be able to be here to recognise you on behalf of the city of Greater Shepparton. Your name will always go in as a part of our sporting tributes and uh, it's wonderful. Would you please, once again, welcome Jeremy Garner. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. I want to move back now to the sport of cricket because, uh, as I said earlier, Shepparton is still to boast an Australian Test player. However, Shepparton has produced some very good cricketers and none better than the Central Parks and Brendan's Cricket Club's uh, long-time player coach, Rowan Larkin, who reached the heights of, interst of interstate first-class cricket and returned to play an integral role in the club's success, including being captain of seven premiership teams. Rowan showed his class as a local junior with St Mel's and Notre Dame before making his way into Central Parks and Brendan's. He was a class batsman and a spin bowler who cemented himself as a top player. He was selected to represent Shepparton Country Week and it was in Country Week game at Princes Park that, like his mate Brian Doyle, was seen by the Carlton people and invited to go and train and the rest is history because that commenced a 10-year career for Rowan with the Carlton Club. His performances saw him elevated to the state squad and proudly represented his state, Victoria. He played Sheffield Shield cricket from 1994 to 1997 and one day cricket for Victoria from 1992 to 1998. Rowan was also selected to play for Victoria against international teams England, New Zealand, Pakistan and the West Indies. Following his time at Carlton, he became captain coach of the Footscray Cricket Club for two years and then came back to the Goulburn Valley and won the position as Regional Cricket Development Manager, uh, officer, which was great, but rather than going back to his old team, he actually joined the Stanhope Cricket Club for three years, winning two premierships in that time, before returning to Central Park, where he was a sensation. He was captain coach, and under Rowan's guidance, the club won nine Hazeman Shield premierships and eight one-day premierships and five T20 premierships. His love of playing for the association was also there because he captained Shepparton Cricket for 10 years and was voted Cricketer of the Year twice and won the Burt Lightfoot Medal. The Jewel Greg Lusker medals as well and won the A-grade batting average four times. He is a life member of Central Parks and Brendan's Club where he amassed 7,291 runs with 17 centuries and 37 half centuries with an average of 52. He also took 144 wickets, so it was no surprise that he was awarded life member of Central Parks and Brendan's and in the team of 25 years. Not only was the club's best ever player, but he took on duties such as committee member, grants coordinator, club secretary, junior coordinator, a junior coach team manager. Rowan Larkin will always be recognised as one of the finest cricketers to represent Shepparton. The Cricket Association has named the Man of the Match medal on the one day final, the Rowan Larkin Medal, which celebrates his commitment and contribution to the game, which is the reason why he's being inducted as a Roll of Honour member for the Sports Hall of Fame. Would you please welcome Rowan Larkin. Well, Rowan, many, many people I know in Shepparton 
really have said that you have stood at the other end of the wicket for far too long while they've been trying to get you out. And uh, you must look back on your cricket career and say, well, what a, what a wonderful time you had. Um, the best time, uh, the greatest memories. And I, was, I sort of uh, asked myself uh, this week that how did um, you know, my great mate Doyley, we uh, struck up a friendship in year seven at Notre Dame. And how did we end up here tonight 40 years later? Uh, I scratched my head, but um, it's just been the best fun. Well, as I said to Doyley, it must have been really lucky for you guys to perform well at Carlton that day. And the Carlton Cricket Club saw you and uh, invited you in, and, and there came state representation. Yeah, and, and uh, same again, to share all those experiences with a great mate um, just was the icing on the cake. But um, both of us were really lucky to land at Central Park St Brendan's um, as teenagers, which uh, we couldn't have got any better uh, cricket education from the likes of uh, Gary O'Brien and Robbie DeLudis and Phil Thorne and David Brett. Um, and then to um, just happen to perform on the right night down at Princess Park and, um, and end up at a club there which uh, had some, um, some fantastic leaders as well. So we were very lucky. Your time at Footscray, uh, you picked up a lot from Carlton, I imagine, to put into that as your, as your first coaching job? Yeah, um, look, it was very intimidating because um, the two opening bowlers were Merv Hughes and Tony Dottermade. So to, um, <laughs> to actually tell them what end they're bowling from and what field placements. Um, but it was a, a, a great time for me to grow as a leader as well and, and to learn off those guys. So um, that was intimidating, but, but very uh, worthwhile. And then I think uh, to come back here and decide, no, I won't go back to Central Park, but I'll go out to Stanhope and help them. And I know Stanhope people think of the great time that they had in those years because you provided so much extra for their cricket. Yeah, uh, Central Park's always where my heart lies, but mm. um, those three years I spent out there were absolutely magnificent. Um, we were lucky to win the club's first premiership uh, win in 35 years, so the town celebrated for about 35 weeks afterwards. <laughs> um, but uh, to see the whole township embrace the uh, celebrations was a great memory. And your great results with Central Park St Brendan's has made that club go into the annals of one of the great clubs of, uh, of Shepparton Cricket Association. You must be very happy of your, with your involvement. I'm very proud to be involved there, no doubt. Um, Brian and I have often said the grounding that the club gave us as teenagers, we wanted to go back there and, and try to repay a bit of that debt. Um, but to, to end up playing in so many premierships there and making so many great um, friendships um, and you know to be inducted tonight with Brian but also Lucy and Frank who are, uh, we've shared some wonderful memories, um, it's just terrific. It's not often that people go away and succeed and yet come back to their roots and make the sort of contribution you did. So uh, that's one of the great reasons why you were selected tonight to join the Royal of Honour and uh, I hope that you uh, look back on that and say, well, it was really worthwhile. Ladies and gentlemen, would you say thank you to Rowan Larkin? Thank well you. Well done, Larkin. Thanks, Larkin. Thank you. Thank you. The sport of softball, as we've heard earlier, has been prominent in Shepparton for many years and was enjoyed by hundreds of girls as they grew up in the city. One such girl, Nola Laws, grew up, uh, born in Kyabram, grew up in the failure, but moved to Shepparton as a 14-year-old. She was a natural sport, was a good swimmer, won the GV Swimming Championship. She also played tennis, but one day after breaking her tennis racket on the tennis court, she was enticed to try softball with the Shepherd and Ramblers. Nola took to the sport immediately and showed great ability. She was so keen that she travelled to Melbourne each winter from 1958 to 1965 to play in the Melbourne Softball Association and received specialist coaching. In 1959, she was invited to trial for the Victorian softball team and in 1962 won selection in the Victorian team and played for her state in the Australian Championships in Adelaide. Victoria won the Australian title that year and Nola repeated the feat in 65 and proudly has two national titles to look back on. Following her state representation, Nola continued to participate in Shepparton softball, passing on the knowledge of the sport she gained as a state representative. She played in the senior competition with Dodgers and coached both the under 14 and 17 teams. During the winter, Nola played netball in the Shepherd and Netball Association and coached three premiership teams. I'm not sure whether she got to see much of her brother who was playing football with the Shepherd and Football Club. She was too busy playing softball, Pally. So, uh, but anyway, she later played and coached in Kungupna 
winning three premierships with the Kungupna Road team. Nola showed that with persistence and with willingness to travel and gain coaching support, that representing his state is something that can be achieved. Nola is now welcomed as a Roll of Honour member into the City of Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. Welcome, Nola Lords. Nola, after all those years of uh, travelling backwards and forwards to Melbourne to train and to be coached, was it all worthwhile? I know, I'm broke now. So. <laughs> well, uh, very expensive, isn't it? It to... was, yes. You yeah. have to pay for it yourself, so you have to be fairly dedicated, yeah. otherwise it's, you're wasting your time. So did you have a goal in your mind that you wanted to represent Victoria? Um, having spoken to Dobby, I... I couldn't help but feel that his judgment was spot on. He was so good in himself. He played with the American soldiers during the war. Right. And they had teams in Melbourne and he played competition. And whilst he is a, was about that high and quite cuddly, um, he could roll the ball over for me, batting, using batting techniques, until I was nearly dropping the bat. Right. And he was still doing it. So he was absolutely brilliant in his, in his guidance. So when you came back and, uh, and coached Ken Gupney, enjoy that? Yeah, that was... Um, we won... Switching sports to netball. Yeah, no, no. Well, we'd, I'd been playing in Shep for 10 years and we'd won three chem premierships there. Um, and then when I went to Ken we played... And we got another three free premiership out there. And then I, was, I started to feel very tired. I think I'd worn myself out a little. <laughs> so I took it easy and then I had a car accident in 1976, which sort of put a stop to a few but things. Yeah. Right. But you've got something great to look back on, haven't oh, you? Oh, heck yes, time? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, the City of Greater Shepparton now recognises what you did uh, as, a, as a, a loner almost, going to Melbourne by yourself and doing all that. Oh, no, I had help. You did have we help, We had yes. several girls that are right. here, here, Rosemary Tyquin. Um, and uh, there was a couple of others. We We're went down and played. Talking to Rosemary later on. Yes. So congratulations. It's wonderful to have you up here, and uh, it's really terrific to have you in the role of honour. Thank Would you. Would you please very much. welcome? Thank you. To, to the Sport Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, we've just been talking about cricket to uh, Rowan Larkin, um, and, and you know you hear in sports worlds. Particularly in football, you hear about the name of Mr Football. Well, in cricket in Shepparton, there was a name of Mr Cricket. And it was carried for over 50 years by a local paint shop proprietor in Bertie Lightfoot. Bert was a well-known local personality who arrived in Shepparton as a young boy with his family when they immigrated from England. And it was a trip to Benalla as an 11-year-old in 1920 to see the English cricket team play on their first tour after the World War that captured Bert's imagination. In 1926, he joined the local cricket scene and performed well. As a 15-year-old, he represented the association and that earned him the first pair of long trousers. He was a leg spinner and uh, that started a lifetime of involvement with cricket. He went on to play 26 Country Week series as a batsman and leg spinner with Shepparton and captained them six times. And off the field, he represented Shepparton at Country Week Golf and was a great contributor to the Apex Club. Uh, when, and, and used to run Apex Antics for them and was chairman of the Shepparton High School Council. Bert was a foundation member of the Old Students Cricket Club in 1928 and he played his last A-grade match in 1955-56 final, one of only five finals in his long career, including the Old Students Premierships of 34-5, 36-7 and 40-41. However, Bert was to make a wonderful contribution to the game he loved as an administrator. During his playing days, he took on the role of Secretary of Shepparton Cricket Association for 11 years, and then in 1951, he became President after the President retired, and Bert stepped into the President's position that he would hold for 38 years. Bert operated a paint and wallpaper shop in Friars Street, which was always frequented by cricketers and cricket administrators. 
Bert retired from playing but relished the job as association president. He got to know people through the Victorian Country Cricket League and he had many tours overseas, particularly of England, where he went on to meet uh, people like the Bedser twins who became very friendly with everybody knew him at Lords and he was certainly Mr Cricket in Shepparton but he was also Mr Cricket around Australia where people knew him. His success in business would make it possible for him to travel because um, Ron Guy was back in the shop, his nephew uh, selling paint while Bert was overseas at cricket. And uh, he visited the great cricket arenas of the world and made great friends. His service to the community and sport was recognised when he received an MBE in 1976, the Queen's Birthday Honour List. So the City of Greater Shepparton now proudly inducts the late Mr Cricket, Bert Lightfoot, as a into the Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame honour roll and is being presented by a member of his family tonight in Doug Small. So Doug, would you come out and receive the presentation on behalf of Bert Lightfoot? Would you welcome Doug? So, Doug, just um, come over and, and tell us, as, as a member of Bert's family, you must have some memories of, uh, of what he was like and how much he loved his cricket. Um, yeah, certainly. Uh, Uncle Bert, as we knew him, was um, a bit of a cheeky sort of a man. He always had something to say, um, and it was always with a, with a joke. Um, and with, uh, yeah, with his cricket, second to none in the area of um, putting back into the game way more than what he took out of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Did, did you realise as he, as you were growing up and saw him that uh, as what uh, such a, a guy he was in cricket around the area? Um, because I'm from Newmerca and um, wasn't involved with uh, cricket Shepparton at the stage, so I didn't really know no. until um, of course when they were awarding the Lifford Medal yes. and it was after Uncle Bert. Well, that was um, and it's still awarded now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, he uh, he spent so many years involved in cricket. Uh, he sold a lot of paint. He used to come into 3SR when I was there and run a program called Colour and Harmony. And he would give people, um, he'd say, oh, there's Mrs S from Catandra and uh, I'm going to uh, suggest she has uh, blonde olive on the walls of her kitchen and all this sort of stuff. I think he made them up most of the time, but he used to love talking to the people on the radio and I used to have him in my sports programs uh, as president of the Cricket Association and he was great. So you can be very proud of, uh, of your forebear in Bertie Lightfoot and it's wonderful that you could be here to represent him. Thanks very much, no would you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's interesting that when sports people perform, they need the support of many people around them, as we've heard tonight. Masseurs, trainers, organisers to help their sport succeed. Katandra dairy farmer Richie Mann was someone who provided wonderful support to sports participants for over 50 years. Richie took to learning the job of sports trainer and helping sports people with injuries. He did play table tennis and represented the area at Country Week. He first managed junior football team at Katandra and acted as trainer for the senior team. He coached junior athletes to participate in sports carnivals, including running a Katandra Sports Day each year. With support from his friend Jim Phillips, he was able to start a thirds competition and then a fourths competition in the then Tungamar Football League. Richie was president of both competitions and the best player award in the thirds wins the Richie Mann, or won, before the league finished, won the Richie Mann medal. And in the early 1960s, schoolteacher Graham Fittall enlisted Richie's help in taking a Goulburn Valley schoolboys junior football team to play in the schoolboys state carnival in Melbourne. That commenced a 50 year involvement with those schoolboys. There was no prouder person than Richie when some of those players eventually made the VFL or the AFL. Richie's junior football support was noticed at state level and he was recruited to become a trainer for the Victorian schoolboys team. He travelled throughout Australia for 37 years with Victorian schoolboys and became friends with many of them. One particular weekend, Richie got out the Herald Sun and looked at the teams that had been selected for Saturday's games. He found 94 players that he'd been involved with 
as a trainer and trained 94 of those AFL players over the years that he had spent with schoolboys footy. Yet through that, he could always still be found at Katandra, where Richie would be found in the rooms. Now, when I, I've known Richie for 50 years, and he was the one bloke who called them the rooms. We always called them the sheds. So Kevin Teague always called them the sheds out there at Katandra, and Mervyn Opie and Harry Britton, they were always in the sheds. But no, Richie said, I'm going down to the rooms. And Thursday night was footy night and a, and a, and a meal, but Richie was there to help the players along. He was concerned at the lack of sports trainers and convinced two local doctors to undertake a sports training course so they could conduct training sessions for local trainers. And Richie was an inaugural member of the Goulburn Valley, a Goulburn Murray Sports Trainers Association. In the summer, he supported cricket. He became president of the Shep Junior Cricket Association, a position he held for 20 years. He promoted Shepparton Junior Country Week, which ran for many, many years, or still does. He was involved in organising the GV Schoolboys Cricket, and one of those particular cricketers he got involved with was a fellow called Simon O'Donnell, who you well know as a cricketer, a sports commentator, etc. The community and sporting bodies have really appreciated Richie's support and involvement. He's been honoured to receive no less than nine life memberships. The AFL presented him with a recognition of service medal and he received the Centenary Sports Medal. He was honoured when the Victorian Government presented him with the Order of Australia Medal for services to sport and the community. So the City of Greater Shepparton now recognises Richie's commitment and support to junior sport with an induction to the Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame honour roll. Richie is, is very unwell. He is in Ave Maria. I was with him this afternoon and I read to him what I was going to say about him tonight, which made him tear up a fair bit, but it was wonderful to spend that time with him. He said, I just can't make it tonight, Don, but my lovely granddaughter Paige is going to come along and receive anything that I've been given. So Paige Mann, would you come out please to represent your grandfather? Okay, Paige, um, I, I guess you will remember when your grandfather uh, had his photo on the phone book. Do you remember that? Come forward and speak. No. You don't remember that? <laughs> Just speak through that mic. No. Well, the, the phone book actually had Richie in his training gear and promoting him as a, as a great trainer. But you, of course, remember him uh, as, as always going to the footy and, uh, and with, with your dad and all that sort of thing, so yeah. don't you? Yeah. And I, I, I've told Richie that you will come and present that to him. Yeah. So I hope you will do that. And I know you love your granddad and, and, and it's sorry that he can't be here, but I'm sure you're pleased to see him rec uh, receiving this tonight. Yeah, very. Thank you. Page man, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you, Paige. <laughs> I want to go west of the Goulburn River uh, and talk about a guy from Tatura whose name is Fredo McMahon, or Fred McMahon, but everybody calls him Fredo. He's had an involvement in Goulburn Valley football for over 60 years. He joined the Tatura Junior ranks as a player in 1953 as a confident, or some people would say cocky, rover, who was Tatura through and through. He was a fast, elusive player who had uncanny goal-kicking ability, and he was lucky to play in a premiership team and win the Shepparton Junior Football League Best and Fairest Award. He commenced his senior football in 1958 under the coaching of the great Keith Warburton, the former Carlton player. He was invited to trial with both Collingwood and Melbourne. However, his love for the Bulldogs saw him stay with Tatura and cement his place in the local team. He became one of the first players selected every week with Tat. He was also selected in the GVL representative team on 11 occasions. And uh, he became just a player that everybody knew and was always around in GV footy. He had an uncanny goal sense and in 1966 won the GVL goal kicking award and won Tatura's goal kicking award on eight occasions. He holds an interesting record at Tatura and he was runner up in their best and player award 14 times. He did however win the award in 1966 when he captained the Bulldogs for three years. He was honoured with a qualified life member of the league when he played his 200th game. 
He became the first player in Goulburn Valley football to play 300 games, and uh, he also helped form the Goulburn Valley 200 Club and the Tatura Football Pass Players Association. Fred's playing career is only part of the history. It's what he's done for football after his playing days that made him a standout administrator. On retirement, he immediately became involved in junior footy, coaching for six years. He was country recruiting officer for the Melbourne Football Club. He was also a recruiting officer for Collingwood for four seasons. I don't know what happened there, but Collingwood didn't do well for the next four seasons after that, so he couldn't have recruited the right players. However, he loved being involved with footy, and it saw him being involved in country championship games, and he's been team manager for the GVL for 20 years. On a regional level, level he was appointed deputy director of Goulburn Murray Regional Football and became director of football until the VCFL changed the way that they operated. He, uh, the, he won the Football Council Merit Award for service to Australian footy, but he has a great love of history, and especially the history of the GVL. He researched the league history and made a series of honour boards depicting all those involved with the GVL awards and representative teams support over the years. The League will be forever grateful for Fredo's diligence and wonderful work to, the quanti to quantify the GVL's history. He was honoured with life membership of the League. Fred was appointed to the GVL Board of Directors in 2006 and continues to be a board member today. He urged the GVL to institute a Hall of Fame for the League and Fred was against any recognition. However, with his incredible record as a player, team manager, football director, historian and wonderful supporter of the GVL and his unbroken 60-year involvement, he was inducted into the GVL Hall of Fame in 2015 and elevated this year to become one of only three legends of the GVL. He's the only person in the GVL who have given anywhere near the amount of years and service to the league and to Australian football. So Fred o. McMahon now justly deserves to be inducted into the City of Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. Would you welcome to Tura's Fred O. McMahon. Fred O, um, you obviously love footy. It's been a big part of your life and you're still in it. Yes, Don, and I love every minute of it, mate. And you continue to do it for a while? Hopefully, if I've got another 20 or 30 years, yeah. So when you look back on such a career, what do you think have been the highlights of what you've enjoyed? Oh, just being involved in making sure that the game stays as it is, uh, and junior football in particular. Our game is slipping a little bit in uh, standard, but I'd like to see that pick up again. Uh, there's a lot of things that we need to look at. Um, there's a lot of areas where I believe that uh, the public can be, be helpful by going to the football and supporting the game. I find that's one of the, one of the areas that we're losing our, our supporter base. So that Many people who play footy don't do as you did and get involved at a league level. Now, you loved league football, you league footy, didn't you? Yeah, certainly did, mate, yeah. I loved it. And there was nothing better than the GVL winning a country championship when you were around. Absolutely. Yeah, so I wasn't in the first one, no. but I was, I, was, I was in some good wins. I was happy. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, when you look back uh, on your career, um, Tatura Footy Club played a very important part in where you are today. Oh, yeah, without Tatura Football Club, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm. Um, football doesn't owe me anything. I owe everything to football. And it started with that. Yeah, simple. Well, uh, do you still think you could kick a few goals if you got out there? No, I don't think so. I'd like to try. I dream about it occasionally, but I, I know I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to say that uh, a couple of times when I was broadcasting over at Tatura on 3SR, um, I probably was a little bit disparaging about your elbows, the way that they went around uh, certain fellas' uh, arms, etc. Yeah, that was only a rumour, Don. That, <laughs> <laughs> that was only a rumour. That never happened at all. Yeah. No, I didn't do anything like that. So you, you know. weren't a tough man or anything, but you No, were... no, I was very placid. Right. Who was the best? Ask Gavin Pogue, he was my ruckman, he'll tell you. <laughs> I saw him here before. Who was, who was the best coach at Tatura in your time? The best coach? Oh, they were all fairly good coaches. The best player, best player I ever played with was Keith Warburton. Keith Warburton. Absolute giant of the game. Well, you were lucky to be there when he was there. Oh, but he was my first coach yeah. and, uh, and uh, I just idolised him. Um, 
Yeah, the, I can't pick one out. They're all very, very good. Yeah. They tell me you were pretty handy behind the stumps when you were a wicketkeeper as well. Oh, not much. God, I used to cheat a bit. <laughs> I used to cheat well, a bit behind the stumps. you did that in golf too. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, here's a man who for 60 years has given his life to football. Would you please welcome into the Hall of Fame, Fredo McMahon. Thanks, Fredo. Can I say something? Yeah. I'd just like to say uh, to the City of Greater Shepherd, and thanks for the honour. I'd also like to congratulate all the inductees tonight. I think it's a fabulous thing that, that the Shepherd, the City of Greater Shepherd are doing. I'd like to thank my family very much, and also I'd like to thank the people who supported me through my journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruno. Tonight we have a swimmer and swimming coach to be uh, inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame honour roll. There has been one name that has stood out above all, and that is Wilhelmina or Willie O'Callaghan. For over half a century, Willie's been associated with the Shepparton Swimming and Life Saving Clubs and has been responsible for thousands of young people being able to swim and swim at a high level. Willie began as an 11 year old when swimming was suggested to her parents as an excellent therapy for an injured shoulder. She fell in love with the sport and as a healthy lifestyle, she became a successful swimmer, particularly at distance events, and her favourite event was backstroke. In the early 20s, she got the coaching bug and started to take swimming lessons to help out with the swimming club coaching. Willie became a coach of renown with the Victorian swimming circles and has had countless positive experiences with swimmers, families, club administrators and swimming officials. Willie has coached a variety of swimmers at a high level and, and her first squad was called Willie's Wagtails. And Willie was a pioneer in introducing strength, power and flexibility through training programs out of the pool. One of Willie's greatest swimmers, Alicia Fidesz, went on to swim butterfly for Victoria at the national championships. Other towns were beneficiaries of her ability. She also coached swimmers at Marupna, Echuca and Baruga. Willie organised a number of swimathons as fundraisers and as an acting member of the Life Saving Club was involved in patrolling the Raymond West Pool and she became very proficient in safety and resuscitation skills, achieving a diploma in the Royal Life Saving Society's highest award. Willie's swimmers won the national championships and she swam for the state. One of Willie's greatest achievements was her coaching of Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame swimmer Kate Church to swim a world record swim for the Australian team at the Sydney Paralympics. Willie's four year guidance of Kate paid off and is something that Willie can be justly proud of. Willie has received a life membership of the Shepparton Swimming Club, a life governor award of the Life Saving Club. The Olympic Torch Committee recognised Willie's commitment to swimming and gave her the honour of carrying the Olympic torch in the leg of the Sydney Olympics torch relay. Whilst Willie has shown amazing patience and strategy when working with junior swimmers. She's also coached the Aussie Masters in recent years. Her humour and goodwill and part of the reason why swimmers keep coming back to her training programs. Willie is a true legend of the sport in Shepparton and we salute her as she enters her 60th year as a swimming coach. Willie O'Callaghan, welcome to the City of Shepparton Sports of Hall of Fame on a roll. Willie O'Callaghan, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Willie, it's been a long, long road and you have seen so many hundreds of swimmers and, and people involved in swimming, but I guess it became your life and uh, Mike was busy running his butcher shop and you were out teaching kids. Uh, yes, but he was, he was down the pool as well. You met him in swimming, didn't you? Was he yes, we met, we met at the pool and my three children, two of them are here tonight, they swam as well mm -hmm. and one still swimming so uh, the whole family's been fairly involved must have been great to see some of your swimmers reach the standard they did yes yeah we had um, quite a lot of national swimmers and i should mention to everyone here tonight i'm sure 
Maddie wouldn't mind if I say that she was in the swimming club, Maddie Garrick. Oh, good. And I did tell her dad that she was going to be a good breaststroker, but she escaped and she went to basketball. So, <laughs> and congratulations, Maddie, on, on your achievements. D during our, our first uh, Sports Hall of Fame a couple of years ago, you were spoken of in very high terms by Kate Church, who puts her success uh, uh, to get into the Sydney uh, Paralympics down to, to your coaching. So it must have been very nice to see her achieve. Yes, it was, and, and Kate's here tonight. She worked very, very hard, and uh, we had some very interesting times in the f four years it took to, to reach the uh, Sydney Paralympics, and yeah. Kate, Kate did a lot of hard work. Well, you've obviously met a lot of people in swimming, and you've coached them, and you've been involved. It's been a good life for you. Yes, it's been Good. very interesting. Well, now the City of Greater Shepparton does recognise what you've done over the years and says thank you to you who have been so persistent in supporting swimming and welcome to the Sports Hall of Fame on a roll. Thank you, Willie O'Callaghan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Willie. That concludes the, the second group. We'll be back shortly with the third group. I just want to say that over there where we've got the uh, the opportunity for you to bid for items. There's some fantastic items over there. Don't miss having a look at them tonight while we're having sweets. Going to have sweets now. While we're having sweets, slip over and have a look and you might like to put a bid in for something and we'll be drawing the bids later on in the night. Okay, we'll be back shortly. I'm now with the next group of people to be inducted into the honour roll of the Sports Hall of Fame. You know, as one drives around Shepparton, you often notice sports fanatics running along roads or walking tracks. One such runner, Pam Pogue, has been one of those athletes who have run, ridden, or swum thousands of kilometres in training for events. In later life, she excelled in triathlons, but that was after a stellar sporting career when she was younger. Pam Pogue grew up at Catandra, as part of a great sporting family, the Tees. She chose hockey as her winter sport and played tennis in the summer, playing hockey with both garnets and strikers and representing the Golden Valley in country championships. Pam not only played the game at the highest level in the Golden Valley, but encouraged and trained many juniors to play sport. She was awarded life membership of the Strikers Hockey Club and the Shepparton Women's Hockey Association. Pam also represented the Golden Valley in tennis and she took on executive roles in all of her chosen sports. Away from sport, the family brought her into the Shepparton show. And guess what? She won Miss Showgirl. So there we go. Pam Poe was Miss Showgirl. Well, Pam T probably in those days was Miss Showgirl. I'm wondering whether there was a big Talamba bloke looking over the fence to see if he could uh, you know, uh, meet the new Miss Shogun. However, it was in triathlons that the event that brings the sports of swimming, cycling and distance running together that Pam really performed well. She was one of the earliest successful female competitors in the Golden Valley. From 45 years of age, Pam competed in her age group. In 1992, she was Victorian Olympic distant event champion and won the SunSmart series. She then moved into the 50 to 55 age group and in 1994 and 95, she was successful in the Olympic distance event and the SunSmart series. She was Olympic distance champion again in 1996 and represented Australia in the World Olympic Distance Triathlon in Cleveland in the USA. Pam continued winning SunSmart Series and Olympic Distance Triathlons through 1997 to 99, and in the year 2000, she represented her country again in the World Olympic Distance Triathlon in Perth, and in the 50 to 59 age group. Also, in 2000, Pam was honoured with carrying the Olympic torch into Tatura. She continued to compete and won the Olympic Distance Victorian title again in 2001. From 2002, Pam competed in five triathlons a year and added other local events to her calendar. In 2010-11, Pam still competed in the 60 to 64 age group in events like the Shepparton Hexman. She was awarded life membership of the Shepparton Triathlon Club in 2012. Pam Pope
Taylor has been a leader in women's triathlon events and has been a role model for girls to emulate. She has been an amazing competitor and is now recognised by the Roll of Honour in the City of Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. Would you please welcome Pam Poe. Okay, Pam, come up and uh, form a Miss Showgirl, if you want to do that. <laughs> form a Miss Showgirl. Hey, I just want to say, it's been a big week for the Tees. David T, Pam's nephew, is the new coach of the Carlton Football Club, and it's been with uh, you know, great trepidation that people look towards that, but you as his auntie must be pretty happy. And he, your mum and dad are here tonight too, David's mum and dad, so that's great. And his uncle and aunt. Yes, they're all, all the families here, so you must be pretty happy with that. Oh yes, we're all on the team train. All right, the and they're on the team train. <laughs> Trouble is it doesn't go to Catan, but does it? So, um, you know, not, not, not about the, the, the shepherd and the showgirl, that was just a part of the thing, but what got you interested in triathletes? Because you became such a terrific competitor. And was that something you looked at after your hockey career? It was. It was a finishing of the hockey. I kept playing hockey for right. quite a few years, but uh, I felt as though uh, the competitive, you know, sport, uh, body contact sport was over for me. So then I was looking for something that I could do training when I want to run on a straight line um, and just enjoy it with the swimming and everything. And um, so I, I did a, a very small one with one of my daughters and borrowed a bike and ran around the lake and sort of liked it. And then just Was this after your family grew up a bit or were they still small? Uh, oh no, no. All the children had gone, gone. to university by then. Yeah. So you were a busy mum, but then decided you'd have some time for yourself. Which discipline did you enjoy the most, running, swimming or cycling? Uh, well, swimming was the easiest. Um, cycling, when you had to do that. Yes. <laughs> and running was something I really liked doing anyway. So So was it good to live out at Talamba where you had plenty of roads to be able to run on and train on? Yes, yeah. yeah, it was. But you didn't have any company to do it no. with. So I did most of my training on my own, really. What about competing overseas, which you did very successfully? Were you, were, that, that must have been pretty hard. Mm. That was not a pleasant experience because it was in August now and the training here was freezing. So I used to set up my indoor bike with the heaters and fans blowing on the, the hot, the hot blowing on you to try and acclimatise because when I went there it was like 38 degrees or something and the water was hot, we couldn't wear wetsuits and in the run we were just running on cement streets, no shade. Yeah, it was very, very difficult and probably had jet lag as well. So you look back on your career now and you, uh, you've obviously enjoyed it, but would you yeah. do it all again? Oh yes, no. if I... Are you still playing, doing any of those disciplines? No. no. Oh, I, I still do things, right. uh, but not competitively. Not, not competitively. No, right. I like to go to the gym every day. Well, I know the triathlon club was very proud of what you've achieved and I know your family were proud. And now the city of Greater Shepparton is proud and recognises you. And congratulations and uh, welcome to the Sports Hall of Fame. Oh, well, Pam Park, ladies you. and gentlemen. Thanks, Pam. And thank you to you. One of our emergency services, the Country Fire Authority, has a competition between brigades that tests the athleticism and ability of the members of the brigade of their running teams. Brigades from across Australia come together to compete in fierce competition. Local brigades train furiously to gain the opportunity to try themselves against the best other teams in a range of events. The real events with water attract attention. However, the ladder and hydrant races are the premier individual events in the competition. The ladder race is an incredibly fast event, requiring competitors to sprint 
for 22 metres along a track, then climb a six metre ladder, cross a three metre platform, and then in the quickest time possible, and it, the event requires participants to be super fit and be able to place their feet in a precise position as they climb the ladder at full pace. And if you don't believe me, when you see a demo being held at Marupna or somewhere in the future, just go and have a look and see how athletic these firemen are. Firemen from across the country train for countless hours as they bring their times down as low as possible. The city of Greater Shepparton has boasted some top performers over the years, but one man stands out above the rest of the competitors. The Tatura Fire Brigade is justly proud of Martin Rennie, who has won has held the record for the event over so many years. Uh, Martin is a member of the, f the famous Rennie family who provided so many competitors to the Tatura Club, or Tatura Brigade, and they've been a very successful in competition. At 11 years of age, Martin joined his two brothers and junior running team, which won several championships. On moving into senior competition, he had the goal to win the ladder race. He trained five days a week, including running up and down the steps at Tatura Milk, at the external staircase and the Rue Mines at Rushworth. Great places to train. The training paid off and Martin was successful in the senior state championships in 1992. He won the latter event in a time of 6.22 seconds. If you think he's run 20 metres, 22 metres along the track, he's jumped, gone up the ladder and then crossed a, a form up the top and he's done that in 6.06 seconds, but there was more to come. He broke the record set 15 years earlier that year. The Tatura boy had arrived as a top performer and everyone took notice of his events and the times that he ran. That he, ran. he won again in 94 at Bendigo, and in 1996, he set a record time of 5.99 seconds, which still stands today as the best time in Australia. So Martin is still the current record holder for the ladder race and is the only person in Australia to record a time below five seconds, or below six seconds. So Martin has done brilliantly. Three of his winning times are the fastest ever recorded in the championship history and he's renowned as a ladder champion throughout Australia. He also competed for Tatura in four, six and eight person team events, pushing the reel and hoses and aiming water at a target. He, uh, Retired, so be it, um, in 1998 to allow his brother Sean to represent Tatura, and Sean won the event three times. The current annual winner of the ladder race at state championship level is now awarded the Martin Rennie Shield, a medallion that's donated by the Tatura Fire Brigade and presented each year by Martin. After his retirement for competition, he commenced coaching the Tat Juniors, and under Martin's coaching, Tat Juniors have won seven junior state championships and were runners-up twice. They've won all five aggregates and have been overall championship brigade at the one championship three times. He's also been thrilled to see his four children compete uh, in, in the fire brigade competitions and they've all been members of winning championship teams. So today the city of Greater Shepparton salutes fireman Martin Rennie for his dedication to protecting the community and his support for the Tatura Fire Brigade for his success in fire brigade events and holding that record for so many years as the best ladder man in Australia. And we now have pleasure in inducting Martin Rennie into the City of Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame. Welcome, Martin Rennie. So Martin, come across and uh, tell us how are the shins, because on those ladder races you actually hit the shins a fair bit, don't you? I did slip a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, it took skin off my shins quite often, so you'd have to ice them for a couple of days, but you still managed to train in between. That six seconds, did you look at that as a 14, 15 year old when you were watching your first demos and say, oh, I'd love to be able to do that? Actually, the first year I wasn't even interested in the ladder race. Right. It was only a couple of years after that. So um, all I wanted to do was just be good at it. And I got, well, I, I got sick of coming second and third, so I upped my training. And uh, I won in 6.22 at Marupna. Yeah. And then I set my sights on the record, and I won, got the record the next year. 
And then I set the sights on the six second barrier, which had, hadn't been done at state championships, and that took three years. So, so the people at Tatura Milk were happy for you to be running up and down those steps? Yeah, we had to get permission. Yeah. We had to get a written declaration that but I was that, that was good training for you? Oh, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. And Rue Goldmines as well. Well, it takes a good fire brigade to go away and win the championships that you have, so you must have had good people around you at Tatura as well. I had a good bunch of blokes, um, good, good support from the brigade. That's probably the most important thing. Um, family, my mum and dad got me into the sport at a young age. Yeah. And uh, I've got to mention Sandy, I'll, get, I'll be walking home. You've got to do that, Just, uh, that's right. Massage my legs every night because I was training a lot, so. You, you yeah. didn't, didn't invite um, Fred A. McMahon over from the football club to have a run, did you? No, I didn't. No, no. I didn't. <laughs> Uh, I guess that's something that he could have done. But look, yeah. um, it, it's just terrific because a lot of people don't understand that fire brigade competition is such an athletic sport and it just takes so much endeavour to, to be able to do it. And you must look back now and think, well, it's all been worthwhile. There's a lot of good athletes run. Um, there's a lot of people that run professional foot running, so that's what yeah. I was up against. Right. OK, how many years now have you held that record? I uh, broke it the first time in '93. Right. And then 1996 is one that still stands. So that's I've held the, the mark since 93. Yeah. So that's the one that still stands. So yeah. how, how close have people been to breaking it? Uh, the current champion now has run 6.1. So it, a tenth of a second, you think, is right on it, but it's a lot to try and make up yeah, in right. such a short event. Well, you must be you know, jolly proud to have had that uh, under six seconds as the only man in Australia and held it for so long. And uh, I know the Tatura Fire Brigade are very proud of you and so are the people of Tatura and tonight the city of Greater Shepparton recognises you, Martin, and says, well done. You have uh, certainly done Tatura proud. And as a sportsman, welcome to the Sports Hall of Fun. Thank you very welcome. much. Martin Thanks, Rennie. Mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Many sports in the Goulburn Valley have members who are special, who do so much to ensure the club is run successfully both on and off the sporting arena. The Marupna Crokey Club has such a member who joined the club over 40 years ago. Joyce Russell has been a stalwart of the Marupna Crokey Club, playing in the first division for the Crokey Association, and she's been club champion in the various divisions over 16 years and has won the Goulburn Valley Junior A Division Champion of Champions. Her skill included being a national coach, a national referee, and Joyce has been a great contributor to the club and has served as club president. On the green, she played for many years in pennant and was a member of a number of grand final winning teams. She's won a number of Marupna club individual events, but croquet's not her only sport, as she played both indoor and outdoor bowls. She couldn't do much about bowls because her husband was out there doing it all as well, so he obviously got her along. And Joyce is always available to assist wherever needed and wherever she's involved in the club. She's concerned about the welfare of all participants and people from the club have told me what a wonderful person she is to have in the club. She, she, uh, the, the volunteers, she volunteers for everything that she can be involved in, fundraising and keeping in touch with members. So the Marupna Crokey Club thinks so highly of Joyce and they thank her for her incredible service over more than 40 years. And tonight the City of Greater Shepparton recognises that service and welcomes Joyce Russell into the Hall of Fame honour roll. Welcome Joyce. So Joyce, come and have a, a little chat to us here because I've been told all about you by Ken Moore. <laughs> you don't believe Ken all Moore OAM you. who's here tonight. <laughs> yeah. And he just tells me what a wonderful person you've been to the Crokey Club. You've obviously enjoyed Marupna Crokey and love being a part of it. Yes, yes, it's a great club and uh... But you've also worked at national level, haven't you? Yeah. Yes, you've you've done so what's the best thing you like about Crokey? Well, it makes you think. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but it's the exercise. That's what, that's what influenced me in the first place because I'm well up in years now and uh, I'm very fit and I thank, I thank sport for that. In the first uh, Hall of Fame that we had a couple of years ago, we inducted 
Grace Edwards. And Grace Edwards was a great croaky competitor. Did you play against Grace? Yes, I have. Yeah. So yes. But uh, in our club, yes. she was more in Shepparton. She's in Shepparton, yes, she was. Yeah. You our had Mary club, Grieve. we had Mary Greve. You had Mary yeah, Greve. And she's, she was uh, uh, Australian champion. ladies champion yeah. three years in a row. The daughter Betty's down here, and she says she was here when her mum was inducted into the Hall of Fame last time. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, look, yeah. it's wonderful for the city to be able to recognise you, and Ken Moore and your members of your club were, were delighted to nominate you, and I hope that you enjoy it and you go and put that on the wall and point to your dear husband <laughs> who, and say, look what I've got, <laughs> all right? So you, yes. you do that. I mean, I know he's, he's, he's at Marupnu bowling club doing all those sort of things, but you go and do that yes. and say, look what I've got. <laughs> well done. Well, I just wanted to yep. say thank yep. you too to the committee of, of the Greater Shepparton. Uh, it's a great thought they had, you know, starting this. And, and congratulations to all the winners too. That's good. And thank you to our club for nominating me. Fine. <laughs> and you get Ian to put that up on the wall, okay? Thank you very much, Joyce. You know, for many years in Shepparton, when one visited the Shepparton Post Office, you could have a chat about sport with a guy behind the counter called Frank Scott. One couldn't have imagined that the quiet, unassuming Frank Scott would be the father of 10, and with his wife Lucy supporting their children and their friends in sporting pursuits that would see him continue magnificently uh, contribute to football and cricket as a sports trainer. As the family grew, Frank took them off to sport and soon became involved with looking after teams as coach and official and later on as a sports trainer. He played tennis with Kyala Central Club, of which he's a life member. He coached football when his boys were involved with St Mel's and they moved on to Notre Dame. It soon became evident that the team needed a sports trainer and of course Frank was there. He joined the training staff of the Shep United Footy Club and it seems to today's football fans in Shep United that Frank has just always been there. The GVL executive noticed Frank's ability and invited him to become a trainer for the league team. And uh, he has been doing that for so many years. He was a trainer for the Golden Valley Schoolboys football team and he represented the Notre Dame Club as delegate and vice president and was an organiser of the 4 and 20 football carnival that Notre Dame conducted. He loved his involvement as a trainer and joined the GV Sports Trainers Association and became a member of their committee. This gave him the opportunity to improve his skills as a trainer and in the summertime Frank became involved with cricket as a trainer again, becoming trainer manager for both Bendigo and Melbourne Country Week cricket carnivals as well as trainer for the Golden Murray schoolboys team. Frank's life memberships are many, including the GV Sports Trainers Association, the GVL, the Kyala Central Tennis Club, Notre Dame Footy Club, the Shepparton Junior Footy Club and Shepparton United Football Club. He has won so many awards during his journey, including VCFL and GVL awards, the City of Shepparton Awards as well. Frank Scott has helped thousands of sports people over the years and deserves to be recognised by the City of Greater Shepparton. Frank Scott, welcome to the Sports Hall of Fame as a member of the Honour Roll. Would you please welcome Frank Scott. Frank, come over. It's not like you because you haven't got your trainer's bag with you. Every time I see you at the footy, you've got your trainer's bag. Well, I, as a matter of fact, I had my white pants ready for tomorrow sitting on the couch. Uh, and Lucy and I've got to go early tomorrow Lucy morning to Rochester. To go to Rochester tomorrow. <laughs> Frank, Frank it's, it's, you know, it's been tremendous involvement in sport with your family and, of course, your love of Shep United and you've been recognised there. Um, and, uh, you know, I can remember going to the post office and all you wanted to talk about was footy when I wanted to buy some stamps, <laughs> but you were there for a long time. Um, Frank, you know, sport's been a big part of your life, hasn't it? Having a large family, you start it when they get into primary school and you go till they finish school. And yeah. they've grown up now and uh, we're still both involved. 
and enjoy it. And then, of course, they're coaching and all those sort yeah, of things. But, yeah, that's but, right. <laughs> but you're still, even though without the kids, you're still helping Chef United. Yeah, that's right. Been there for ages. Yeah. So what, you look back on your life now and you, you're glad that you were part of it? Possibly as a trainer, I, I think back and say, maybe I should have got involved 10 years sooner. Yeah. yeah. I just, I was, I've been at United for 33 years, but uh, I possibly could have started a bit earlier and would have learned a bit more. Yeah, things, <laughs> things are not good at United at the moment, but you've been there in Premiership years, of course, and had a great yes, time. Yes, yeah. we had a reunion there the other week. Yeah. Graham Weatherly was there, yeah, spruiking away right. the Premierships and all that. Marvellous coach he was too. I, I, I won't say that you know, you've had a, a great wife behind you because she wasn't behind you. She was many times ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That thing. So we're going to talk to Lucy in a minute. So, <laughs> Frank, congratulations. And, and the City of Greater Shevlin recognised you. Would you please welcome Frank Scott? Thanks, Thanks. Thank you, Breno. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. As I said, Frank's wife, Lucy, uh, is, is next to be inducted. And if it wasn't for such people like Lucy who organise sport and sporting clubs, uh, as well as raising 10 children, Lucy has done so much for sport and administration over 50 years. She's been awarded life membership of six organisations, which demonstrates her dedication and commitment to her children's involvement and to sport in general. Many sports fans will have seen Lucy when she's been a scorer at cricket, an administrator for junior footy, and in lifetime of sports involvement, Lucy has a list of achievements too long for us to cover tonight. But taken on the role of secretary at Central Parks and Brendan's Cricket Club, Shepparton Cricket Association, she was awarded a Cricket Victoria Outstanding Volunteer Award, and it was in junior football administration that Lucy excelled as secretary and registrar of the junior football competition. And I was chairing their tribunal and just saw how much work that Lucy did as secretary of that junior organisation. This also took it a regional level where she represented the competition and played a role in the GV Regional Football Board. Her favourite footy club, of course, has been with her husband, has been Shep United, where she served on the General Committee, was Treasurer of the Ladies Committee. She played tennis at St Mel's and Kyala Central, where she was club treasurer. Always did something. And, uh, it's, uh, and Lucy specialised as a cricket scorer and over the years scored for Central Parks St Brendan's, Cricket Shepparton, Kyala Knights, Notre Dame, and she was also a registrar, a treasurer at St Mel's and scorer and team manager. To help with her work, Lucy undertook sports administration courses in both cricket and football. The football administration body, the VCFL, recognised Lucy's work by awarding her the recognition of service medallion. The contribution Lucy has made has been well recognised by the organisations she's worked with, Awarded life membership of Central Parks and Brendan's, uh, Cricket Shepparton, Kyala Central Tennis Club, Notre Dame, Shepparton Junior Footy Competition, Shepparton United, etc. So, as one can imagine, Lucy's always been an exceptionally organised person who achieved all this whilst raising 10 children. Shepparton Sport was so well served by this amazing lady whose contribution is now well recognised in her city and she will take her rightful place in the Sports Hall of Fame. Welcome, Lucy Scott. Okay, Lucy, it's, uh, it's been a long time in sport and I know that you've enjoyed what you've done, but uh, gee, it's been interesting for you, hasn't it? It really has. Oh, and raising 10 kids at the same time, and some here tonight, and it's, yeah. it's, it's just terrific that Chevron has recognised what you've done. Scoring was one of the things that looked like Ian Fitzsimmons. You really enjoyed doing, didn't you? I love figures, yeah. um, and all the time I had in football, it was good, um, more computer or whatever, but cricket really brings you into that, um, yeah, the finer points. And I think I really enjoyed my cricket. It's taken over my love of football. But you did such a great job of, the, of Secretary of the Shepparton and Junior Football Association. That was a big job to take on. Oh, I was a bit of a boss, wasn't I, I think? 
and that other well, B I'll word of Elemental. Way, they did what you asked them to do. Only because I was scared yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but look, you, you showed great leadership, and I saw you in operation, you showed great leadership because you knew what needed to be done and said, this has got to be done. And the men said, yes, Lucy, we'll do it. So, you know, it was good. Yeah. Really, the, what you don't know was I had a man behind me who used to sit in the land room and say, you've got to stand by this, you've got to stick by... who gave me the force to carry out my attributions, I suppose, that I had. And you couldn't say to him, well, you go and do something, because <laughs> he was already doing it, wasn't he? He was, yeah. yeah. And if it was for him, I probably wouldn't have done any of no. this. It was him that encouraged me. And without the kids' support, I mean, we had kids that were home babysitting while both Frank and I attended meetings. Yeah. Others took on cooking roles while we were out at training with the other kids. So it was a, it's been a family project. Lucy, the city of Greater Shepparton has so much delight in inducting a husband and wife team into the Hall of Fame. You will for, forever be named as a part of Shepparton's sporting history and sporting tradition. Thank you very much for being here tonight and thank you for what you've done for sport. Lucy Scott, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Well, I've been involved in sport in Shepparton for 50 years and uh, there's always talk about the greatest and the best and whatever. Well, Shepparton produced one sportsman in particular that excelled in every sport that he played and he became Shepparton's best all-round sportsman. Ken Tyquan played football, golf, tennis, badminton, cricket, table tennis and basketball. He commenced his footy career with Shepparton, boys club, he joined Lemnos Footy Club as a player and then he wanted to leave Lemnos and go to Shepparton and they weren't happy with that so he stood out of footy for 12 months and then he joined the Shepparton Footy Club and uh, he won their Best Player Award twice. He played in a premiership team and represented the Goulburn Valley League. He also coached Shepparton in the under-17s and the Shepparton seconds. He later coached the One U Football Club to a Pecola League premiership and he also coached the Lemnos Ramblers junior team. Ken was a gifted cricketer, becoming the first player to make over 10,000 runs in the Shep Cricket Association. He won the Shepparton Youth Club batting and bowling averages in a single year, scoring centuries in both finals to take his club to a premiership. He was awarded life membership at the Youth Club. He also represented Shepparton at Country Week. He won the association's A-grade batting average five times and was selected in Cricket Shepparton's Hall of Fame. I was very proud to play cricket at the Shepparton Youth Club and have Ken up there as the doyen of all to see him perform was wonderful. But he played both hard court tennis and lawn tennis as well, winning the hard court singles championships, then the lawn championships on three occasions. He represented Shepparton at Country Week three times and was captain of the Shepparton Country Week team in its first championship at Kuyo. His evenings were also filled with sport as his sporting talents included badminton. Ken won the singles title and represented the association at Country Week. He was president of the Badminton Association, was honoured by the association with life membership. He used to come into my sporting programs at 3SR and do a badminton program and it was always great to see him. But the sport of table tennis was the fourth sport in which Ken represented the city. He also won the A-grade mixed doubles championship and when basketball was introduced to Shepparton in the 60s, Ken turned up at the drill hall to play the game. He also took a team to compete in the Victorian Championships. In the highlights of Ken's sporting achievements, now I just want you to concentrate on this. The year was 1957. And in 1957, Ken Tyquin won the Lawn Tennis Club singles and mixed doubles. He played six innings in the Shepparton A-grade cricket averaging 131 runs and winning the average bat, bat, association batting average. He was a premiership player with the Shepparton Football Club and won their best player award. He coached the Shepparton under 17 team to a premiership. He captained the winning Shepparton Country Week tennis team. He represented the GVL in a game against the VFL Geelong Cats, which Geelong supporters note, the GVL won. There is never likely to be a more successful multi-sports person in the Goulburn Valley. 
and Ken rightly earns his place in the role of honour, but can generally be regarded as Shepparton's best all-round sportsman. Unfortunately, we lost Ken not so long ago, so Ken not with us tonight, but his son Stuart is with us and going to come out and receive the certificate on behalf of Shepparton's greatest ever sportsman, Ken Tyquin. Would you welcome Stuart to the stage, please? So Stuart, come over. You um, you actually were a hockey champion, weren't you? Well, you played hockey. You played played hockey, yeah. Yeah. Played. So your dad didn't play hockey. No. Oh, well, there's one thing your mum did, of no, course. No, they all got dragged along. That's why. Yeah, I yeah. Mum was a champion. Uh, so, so you, of course, were were too young to understand all those sports that your dad were playing with. Got anything on the wall at home that, that would remind you of his uh, performances? Not really. Only the crystal cabinets about the only thing full of trophies. Right. That was all. But right. there's always ball sports around. There's always a a uh, table tennis ball or a billiard ball or a tennis ball laying around. Well, I guess as you've grown up, Stewie, you've, you've heard people talk about your dad. Correct. Yes. And the things that they've said, I suppose you were in wonderment as to how we could do it. Correct, yes. yes. Often wondered. Yeah. I mean, 1957, and you weren't even around then, but no. in 1950, or to do all those things in one year, it just showed, and can I say to you, as somebody who played in the same cricket club, he was an absolute gentleman and he was a wonderful man to have around the club. So you can be very proud of what your dad achieved and uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll be pleased to see that the city of Shepparton have recognised our best all-round sportsman in Ken Tyler. No worries. Good on you. Stuart, thank all you. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate. So. Well, before we had a husband and wife team involved in mostly administration and training, etc., but tonight we welcome the wife of the late Ken Tyquin, our best all-round sportsman, and Rosemary Tyquin, the name has been synonymous with sports excellence in Shepparton, of course, for many years. Rosemary's been a wonderful sports contributor in hockey, softball, tennis, badminton and golf. While she played all sports with aplomb, it was hockey that took her to state representation. Rosemary's been a part of Shepparton hockey since her early teens, playing with the Shepparton Hockey Club and then younger set until its amalgamation with old students in 1976. She was a part of a younger set A-grade premiership team seven times. Her brilliance in the local competition saw her selected to represent the association at the annual country championships, and she won the TJ Phillips Trophy for the best player at the country championships and won the Keith Essen Perpetual Trophy three times. In the 1960s, Rosemary was selected to play hockey for Victoria, three times and captained the state in 1962. She was also selected to play for Australia in 1962, but unfortunately had an illness and was unable to re represent Australia. In 65, she captained the Victorian country team against Malaysia. Later in her career, Rosemary was selected to play for Victoria in the Veterans Championships from 1987 to 89. She was also in the Victorian team that won the gold medal at the 88 Honda Masters. Rosemary qualified as a hockey umpire and has been the hockey umpire's umpire convener, committee member, umpire and selector. She also coached junior hockey at local primary schools. Softball was another sport in which Rosemary excelled, playing for old students. She played in four premiership teams, represented Shepparton softball on multiple occasions. Rosemary travelled to Melbourne for three years, playing softball for the Swans team in the Melbourne competition. In the evenings, Rosemary played badminton with Scott's A-grade team and with the Methodist Club initially. Tennis was another sport Rosemary took part in with the Methodist Club in the hard court competition and also played ladies midweek tennis. On the golf course, Rosemary has won the Shepparton C-grade golf championship twice and was successful in the four ball best ball knockout championship with Jenny Kneebone. Rosemary Tyquin has been a much loved figure in Shepparton sport. She's always had an infectious smile, and I can tell you she's one of the nicest people you would ever meet in sport or meet anywhere. The City of Greater Shepparton now welcomes the opportunity to recognise Rosemary's efforts and appoints her, along with her husband Ken, to the Sports Hall of Fame Roll of Honour. Would you welcome Rosemary Tyquin?
Rosemary, sorry you've had to wait so long, but then you've been able to see what everybody else yes. does. So, so I don't have to say anything now, do I? No, it's all been said. It's, it's all been said. <laughs> Your, your family, of course, uh, with, with Ken being so involved with sport and you became involved in sport uh, and your, your name was, uh, was, was revered in, in hockey circles, uh, but uh, it's, it's been wonderful for the, for the Taekwon family to, uh, to have that involvement. Yes, well, I'm very happy to say the three of us, are, um, my daughter and Stuart and myself, are all life members of the association, so they've all... You know, put in quite a bit. So That's great. great. Well, to represent your state, but to do what you've done in local hockey and in in, in, in local sport, it's just fantastic. And uh, everybody appreciates what you've done. Everybody loves you. That's ever had anything to do with you in sport. And the city of Greater Shepparton wants to recognise that, Rosemary. And so you've got mm. that to put up, and Ken's beside yes. it. Yes, and I'm, it'll be wonderful. I'm shifting into a new uh, unit shortly, so I'll be very proud to put them both up. And next okay. to your friend Jan Enders, I believe. Yes. So don't 42. you two get into too much no. trouble down there at Takula, no. will you? 42 years we were. You you, know, you've lived uh, next to one another, and now you're going to do it again. Now we're going to do it again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Would you much. welcome the First Lady of yeah, Hockey, thank you. Rosemary Tyker? Thank, thank you, you Rosemary. Thank you. So that's the presentations we have. Um, we're going to ask the kids that came forward to come forward. Uh, and receive a certificate of participation for their involvement. So, uh, Madam Mayor, would you like to present to Bailey Poole? Xavier Moon is the next one. Oh, uh, sorry, they've got to get a they've got to get a pass for for swimming as well. Uh, Chloe North, All right. Madeline Berry, Belinda Moore. Thank you to these kids who have been involved in helping us out tonight. Ava Bathman. There we go. Amelia Truen. Kiara Benjamin. There we go. Uh, Kyla McNabb. Alex McRae. Aidan Dawson. Ren McCarran. And we've got a couple of group swim passes over. You can give those to whoever you like, Madam Mayor. Um, so, would you please thank the kids? Now, I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Dennis Patterson, the chairman of our committee, just to close the, the show in a second. But uh, at the, as immediately Dennis does that, we would like all the people who have been inducted tonight to come on stage for the group photo that hopefully will appear in the Shep News, etc. So, um, when, as soon as we have closed the show, please, would all those people who are, have been inducted tonight come up on stage, and we will uh, we will take the photo when the Shep News can do so. So they're just doing that now. So, I would like um, Dennis Patterson to come forward uh, as chairman of our committee and uh, and say a few words. Would you please welcome Councillor Dennis Patterson? Now, this yes, is, this is Daryl Butcher from our committee as well. <laughs> um, I'm just going to steal Dennis' thunder for a second. Uh, a night like this just doesn't happen. It takes an enormous amount of organisation. And I can tell you when you get uh, half a dozen old codgers in a room and we're trying to dis make a decision on something, somebody's got to rule the roost. And that somebody uh, who uh, does the job so well is Belinda Connor. Belinda, would you care to come forward, please, and just accept this small gift from us? Yeah. Okay, get the kids off. Thanks, kids. Councillor Patterson, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Don. It's it's always a pleasure to follow you. Um, good evening, everyone. I hope you've um, had a great night. Uh, my job here tonight is mainly to uh, wind up the auction, which hopefully has gone very well. Um, you hope you've all had a chance to have your bids and get some money into this, um, the 
Sporting Chance Grant Program, which makes sport accessible to all kids. Now, I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but you know, sport's more than the game. Uh, when you're a youth or a young person, you learn so many other skills from sport. You learn teamwork, you learn dedication. Um, there's so many other things, and you make friendships, which stands out here like you wouldn't believe. You make friendships for life with people that are like-minded. It really does develop your personality, and that's why council in general really does support sport. And as I said, I'm preaching the converted. Um, what I'd like to do before I do the, uh, the winners is thank the committee. As a councillor, you get to go on lots of committees, and um, it's hard to get people that are really active. This committee has just been incredible as far as the community representatives on this committee. And I'd like to personally thank them. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Belinda and her team. It's just been amazing for the whole process. Don has been absolutely magnificent. Um, the job he's done tonight has been incredible. Um, Daryl Butcher, Margot Constantino, Constantino, how did I go? I've been practising all night. And I, yeah, I've been practising all day and I think I've still got it wrong. <laughs> and Fitzy, and um, they've been incredible. And they've really been active and we would have this event probably if they weren't on the committee, but it'd be nothing like it's been. It's, they're very professional people. They've done a power of work. And Councillor Bruce Genovetti and myself sort of sit back in awe and look at the work they do in between committee meetings. And they're every month. The amount of work, as I said, um, has been um, incredible. And uh, it was good to see them, some of them rewarded tonight. When I became chairman, I thought, you know, I wasn't all that good at sport, but being chairman, you might have a chance of picking up a bit of a award here. But, bloody committee won't represent marbles as a sport, so I'm still struggling to, to get an award. Um, we'll keep working on that one. Um, what I'd like to do is um, now announce the winners of our silent auction. Remember, all the money that is raised goes to buy kids that can't afford to pay their subs to their local footy or soccer club, a pair of boots, a racket to play tennis, it gets them back out in the sporting field, and that, that's so important. So I'll go through the winners, and the uh, first winner was um, for two by um, membership tickets for the St Kilda Football Club for next year was Sandra Jones, uh, the Teller Collective Produce Hamper, a Christine Doyle, Beauty by Amanda was um, Colleen Garrick, Voucher, Togemore Golf Club, Peter Minchin, um, P.S. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Cabanero Voucher to Talia Steele. Aquamoo's 12 month membership to Felicity Booth. Don't know where they got that prize from, but anyway. Uh, Tony by Hair, Men's Felicity Booth. Uh, Tabilk Wines, Andrew Garner. Purdy's Earrings, Andrew Garner. Garner again, sorry. Um, New Beauty Voucher, Voucher, Felicity Booth, 14 by Magpie, um, Magpie Tickets, Belinda Connor, Riverlinks Double Pass, Andrew Connor, I think, whoever bid will know. Uh, Melbourne um, Museum to Adult Passes, Talia Shearsfeld, um, McCluskey Air Conditioning Installation, Felicity Booth, you're going to be busy out there. Richmond Football Club, signed jersey. Um, I don't think there was anyone got that. Geelong 2000, um, can't read this. Must have been passed in, but I did have a bit on that myself, being a premiership year for the Cats. Um, signed, OK, we were very successful, Brendan. We've got the um, Donna, Donna Donaghy cricket, uh, sorry, tennis racket and book. Well done. MCG um, tour pass, uh, Jacinta Harrop, and the cheeky grog hamper, Chris Walker. So thank you to all those people that have, have um, bid. 
and been successful. Thank you to the donors. And again, thanks to everyone that's made the wonderful night. Congratulations to all the winners, well deserved. And we hope to see you all back here in two years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, so, seeing it's a sports night, uh, the Australians are four for 76, chasing 258, and Sydney are 39 points in front of Melbourne. So that concludes tonight's program, except for the fact that we want those from uh, those uh, inductees to come up on stage to have their photo taken. Thank you very much.